troops. Just before we begin the podcast, I want to do a special shout out to Paul Ferguson and Mick McKay. They're doing a charity fundraiser for the Scottish Association for Mental Health. That's mainly due to the fact that so many young people have taken their lives recently. The idea behind this fundraiser is to raise money for the charity and also raise awareness for people that may be suffering from mental health and let them know that the help is always there. So what they're doing is, it's more like a kind of gala day they're arranging. It's a charity football match, they've got face paint, they've got bouncy castles, they've got snack vans, live music, beat the goalie, they've got competitions and raffles to be won. Anybody's welcome to attend this, and the idea is hosting it in the memory of people who have lost their lives to mental health, or people that are still suffering it to this day. The location is Hillwood Boys Club Football Park. That's 40 Shields Court, that's in Priest Hill Park. The date it's done is July 2021, but that might change, obviously, due to restrictions and lockdown and that, so we'll keep you posted. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave a wee link in the bio to the Just Given page, and feel free to donate. You can donate as little as a fiver, you know what I mean? And it does, it goes a long way. I've donated myself, so I wouldn't ask you to do the same if I hadn't done it. And I get the chin up, you know what I mean? Feel free to attend this charity football match, and I hope you enjoy the podcast. Thanks. Good, man. I just get on all right now, eh? Great, man. Fucking, I'd, nobody would rather go travelling in the world than with my wee brother, man. Mate, I could swear to God, I oh, found them, mate. I brought you a present, mate. What? Here you go, mate. Some tea bags, mate. Oh, Christ. Some man. of the best tea you'll ever have, mate. And he was just buying a, a caffeine free lift. Who the fuck's that? Vanilla scented candle. Amazing, mate. mate. You're the yeah, first man, fucking man. proudie for that, Cheers, mate, really. Fuck you. Yeah. Get my empty right. bags, man. Ah, oh, good. They'll, they'll be the best herbal tea you ever have in your life, mate. So, what do you. Because Matt was what I have a tea there, man, but he's, there was no milk, so he fucking flushed it. Like. Straight a bit of hot water, man. Aye. That's it, a bit of hot yeah, water. Caffeine free lift flushed with cinnamon warmth. There you go, man. Yeah, yeah. caffeine free, what, man, then? Aye, go for it. Aye, go for it. Aye, nice see for that, mate. That's nah, a fucking. Amazing. Smells lovely, man. It's good to see it's a bit used, man. I could either give you a shite. No, like a shite candle that was new. Oh, that one's been no, in the room one's for a while, man. Beautiful. I'm not happy with that. That's a good candle, man. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, Mummy, light it? I got a light here somewhere. Probably against the fucking metal. There's a fire alarm button, you can go sit I think if we take it take it down and blow it outside when we put it off, we'll be fine. Nah, but it's pure ice. Surely a fucking candle doesn't set a fire alarm off. Otherwise, it would have been off all the fucking time. Mm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't set a fire alarm. How many fucking candles do you see in like, offices and shit? Nah, true. That's true. But vapes. That's why they want to see what we've done. We had a, mm. a party in here. We had a party. I came in to record a tune, but we got a couple of boys into record and a couple of pals and we had a bit of a sesh with it. And obviously they couldn't. We we share the studio with cunts, so we ended up getting chin for it. We get chin for it, man. So we can't do it. So it's now it's like we're kind of on shaky ground. I've broken mm. a chair. There's shit's had a couple of things have happened. Stay us. We only had this like a few months, two mm. months, and uh, I so it's we're kind of our jackets on a shuggly nail as they Fair say. Grounds, man. I uh, I will imagine it's lit, man. And ah, yeah, that's it, man. Just to look at let it let it be the appearance of being lit. Mm. At first, right, the idea we had, it was a year ago, we were in the village hotel, me, Matt and my pal Doc, and we were like, ah, we were sitting fucking mad with it, and we were solving the world's issues, you know what it's like, a few beers, it was fucking dynamite. Then, uh, it was the night of a Rangers game, so a couple of Rangers players came in like, after the game, and there was this guy for Rangers TV, he was like, at the next booth, and he was interviewing somebody, and he had like, a wee tripod like that, and a laptop, and it was so simple to set up. Aye, we were like, ah, we could fucking do that, like, like, we were like, ah, see if we had a mic in between us, man, this is doing a well to a podcast. Mm. Like, right, we're doing a podcast, and obviously COVID hit, so that kind of put a span on the works for the time being. Uh, we go right into it, right, probably about August then, so end up four days doing that, boy Ryan, he joined it as well. And we were doing it, man, but it was, it was like, see, getting it up and running, man, it was yeah. like, at first... See, because it was four days, I was kind of like, ah, right, but letting them kind of do the work. So, and I, I was sitting back and chilling. Plus, and I'll see you before countries are, you're trying to get your word in, know what I mean? Mm. And it's like four people talking, imagine four countries talking in a kitchen or some shit like that, know what I mean? It's hard to mm-hmm. fucking get your bit. We had four on and one, but it was our Zoom, so it was like two on the Zoom and two on the Zoom, and even that was difficult, man. Mm. And especially if it's the, like, boys you know. So it's that sort of like, fucking right, right, right. Ah, you're just, you can't wait to get what you're part in, man. Brutal, man. But see, with the Zoom, man, a few cunts, it's, see, because of the COVID, it's challenging as fuck, see, to get people on. Some people are par, I know what I mean, mm. quite rightly so, you mm. know what I mean? I know what I get, get go out and about, or get seen to be going out about. Mm-hmm. But, eh, uh, aye, some people have said to us about Zoom calls and that, man, but pff, I don't like that, man, I see the Zoom. It's aye. like, loses the, the, like, see, the, talking to somebody face to face, it's much more, I don't know, you get a much more human aspect, see, the Zoom, mm-hmm. it's like, See if I'm on FaceTime with some cunt, I'm just like, ah, I'm just, 
It bo- I get bored after like five minutes and I'm like, alright, fucking hurry up and finish this one. Go on. It looks shit. It looks absolutely shit. Yeah. I seen Drew McIntyre interviewing Matthew McConaughey and that should have been, that should have been, that's a mad <laughs> combination. <laughs> but see, because it was there, FaceTime, couldn't watch it, man. I was like, I, I feel like I'm watching a phone call mm. and I didn't even get a chance, man, because I was like, I could have done that. I could have phoned <laughs> Matthew and been like, oh, mate, fucking, what was it like being in? Can I get one? Dallas Buyers Club. Never Dallas Buyers Club. Eh, fucking fuck. He fucked me with that and all, bastard. Wolf I love Wolf, him. Wolf, Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street. Wall Street aye. Wolf. Limitless. Yeah, Lim- Limitless. Matthew McConaughey. He was he in Limitless? I'm thinking of Bradley Cooper, man. Constantly. <laughs> Always do that. Fuck sake, do man. That. Google what films fucking Matthew McConaughey. I know he was in <laughs> Tropic Thunder. Yeah, you oh my god, you killed a hooker. Was Matthew McConaughey in Tropic Thunder? Ah, he was his agent. He was uh, Ben Stiller's agent. See his mad agent, he phones, he phones a cunt and the cunt, he ends up on the phone to Tom Cruise and he's like, ah, you little fucking jet should come to, I forgot the shit he says, up here. <laughs> but fuck, sorry Matthew McConaughey, if you're not watching you this, know what I mean? Is. Man, a fucking big dude can get him, you can get him. Man. I know, Absolutely. mate, but that's the thing I know, see with his Zoom calls, it's, one time I watched it was uh, DC and Hawaii, see the MMA ones? Yes. It's, it's, <laughs> Dan, Daniel Cormier and Ariel, Ariel Hawaii, he's like an MMA reporter, mm-hmm. the DC, Daniel Cormier, he's like an Held ex-champion. So they did a podcast together and talk about like UFC and shit like that. I was watching it and obviously it's the two cunts like faces. It's like, see what I was watching it stoned and I was like, ah, it feels like they two are talking to me. <laughs> it was a pure weird feeling, man. I was like, ah, fuck it. Can I put freak this out? Too much, Max are staring right down the camera. They're staring right at me and talking. I'm like, ah, these, these cunts could be talking to me. It was like, it was just a pure stone thought and I was like, ah, this is a bit freaky. And I was it's like, intense, oh. man. Ah, nah. Wait, we've never gotten to go back to know. The chase is on and they're doing that with wee, bar, wee screens between them and that. Oh, so. are they, aye? Aye, and the, tra- the chase are the fucking the trendsetters, man. Aye, so. I've, I've, I've never really watched the chase. Don't I've you? watched some clips see, see like the funny bits, but Aye. I've never been a chase guy. You've no, never no, no, watched it. You've seen one episode of this. <laughs> You're like, I'd rather like, look at the wall, mate. Aye, like, mate, ah, oh, fuck this pish, fuck man. Off. Fucking keep me in here. Take it to hell, I get it. Fuck. Fuck off, Brad. Like, I'm not buying your album, mate. <laughs> I know, man. Shit. It's my uh, Fanny Schmeller. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we started, man. I was just... Ah, I'm up and running, nice, mate. Man, that's, I like nah, that, man. Sneak up, See, mate. Aye, ah, fucking is... in and out, nae. Fucking nae. Foreplay, nae. Look, mate. Fuck nice. you, boom. Very nice, man. <laughs> ah, cool. Well, um, I hope you enjoy your candle, mate. And yeah, I, hope... mate, I love the candle and I love the can even more. Candle Strawberry and, can, and lime. Ah, see, see, caught a bird. Mm-hmm. I never... I don't know if it's the bottles are different. See, when I drink, I've drink my four. It's dead pure, oh, gassy. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if it's just... Like, they see the first one, I fucking feel pure buzzing off it, man. It feels mm-hmm. amazing, but eh, uh, I think it's the mare I drink. I end up like, oh, oh give me something else. I'm fucking... Aye, you feel like that fog ass, man. Aye. So, I'm avoiding the old hard liquor, man, because it's fucking lowers the old, what do you call it, resilience, man. Like, the resistance. Just feel like the next, like, even the next day and shit, because I'm, I'm stoking fucking everything, which requires a kind of constant underlying level of... Right, can I do that? Can I do that? Can I do that? Discipline. Aye, constantly. Mm. And if I have like a fucking gin or something, man, I'm just like, oh fuck it, man. Aye, aye, right, nah, what's that, the point? Eight, man, two so? words. Fuck it, mate. Just the, the most dangerous words in the English language, man. I know, mate. And it, like, once you say fuck it, you fucked it. Mm. That's it, mate. Fucking put that in a quote. Fucking right. highlight that bit out, man. Chop that, man. That was a fucking. Get in the fucking the clips. Once you say fuck it. You fucked up. That's it, mate. That's it, man. Um, my wee brother uh, was on TikTok and he, they, 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 they watch stuff and they turn it around and they go, look at that. And he went, yo, fuck it, look at this. And I'm like, 90% it was you. Are you on TikTok? I'm on TikTok. It was definitely you, man. Ah, I was like, that's 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 my my uh, I don't know, man. He showed me and I wasn't even listening to what was happening. So I was like, oh, fuck it, it's fucking festival. Fuck but did they know you knew me or was it just like, no, okay, no, he was just showing me because it was funny. Well, and then I was like, fucking not bad, man. I think that's, if you can sneak your way into people's living rooms, I think that's much better than. I don't know, like, being like, oh, you fucking blah, blah, and somebody passes it and shows you. I'd much rather just, like, somebody was like, oh, i seen that. And it was like, in life, do you know what I mean? Uh, it's like, somebody's seen you, no, because you forced them to, no, because you went. I had the fun at Narena Club. Uh, hey, guys, check it out, seven o'clock, fucking, we're going live. All that, get that fuck, man. <laughs> see, if, uh, see if somebody just goes, oh, duh, that's what I like, man. Ah, uh, you find it on Narena Club. See, that's the thing with TikTok, see if you can pair it, like, see, do you use TikTok? i done one video, man, and it, it done decently, and I was like, feel like a beast, man. And I left. I left. I left <laughs> straight fuck, away. Mate, I'm fucking, I'm bored eating the beast in this way, TikTok. I'm fucking slaughtering fucking 13 year olds and all that, man. But <laughs> mate, I'm slaughtering, they're slaughtering me and I'm slaughtering them back. Feel no I shame, man. You're I ahead of the curve. But the thing is, mate, I don't know what age they are. They're, they're using mad fake accounts and they're telling they're shit calling me a poof or not. And I'm like, ah, like, <laughs> ah, shit like that, mate. And it's like, I don't know, like, I, I could get, I could do what a grown man calling his gay, but see, like, a 13 year old boy, there's something about that. Something like, called, like, that's an extra, but I don't know. Rainbow Leopard 63. <laughs> 
that was going to win it all, man. What age are you, Rainbow Leopard? I've come for you. Right, cause I noticed uh, that because I started slotting that guy's profile picture, then I realised there was like three separate usernames with the same picture. I was like, this kid's a catfish. How do you feel about the old slaughtering online, man? Is it? Well, see, that's the thing, right? See, when I was on Facebook, right? At first, when I started up my 5 o page, mm-hmm. I not if you get the mad trolls try to comment. And they've never got part mm-hmm. And I've got part So I used to just slaughter them back. It's almost like a training ground. That's it. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. I was owning my skills. It was like the fucking Humdergate. Not Humdergate. I was going to say Bumder <laughs> Games and Hunger Games. And I fucked it. But I, it's like Hunger Games, man. I'm fucking not mean. These cunts are catching fire. And I'm fucking spitting it. Oh, I did back on, man. Nah, Redeem yourself in the Humdur Games. But they started Dane in the Facebook. They started reporting my comments. So see if you get a page in Facebook, you probably know it yourself. See Grasses, you get, mate. You never grasses. See if you, you get like. reported like, a comment. Like, it's like you you don't get a chance to review it they just get bummed for banned shit like that so I was getting bands and shit so I was like alright fuck this I'm not replying to these kids because it was fucking me for uploading content I'm off to TikTok and I end up on TikTok and in TikTok see somebody comment something you can make a video what replying to their comments or their comment during you're doing a video That's so beautiful. I started I know it was my niche mate I, <laughs> mate, I started like a few weeks ago and I've got like 10,000 followers now fantastic but now the same issues happening cunts are they're all coming at me. You want mm. to see the comments I get in my videos. Got like, cunts are just giving us it because they're wanting me to slaughter them. Mm-hmm. But I remember there's cunts like, ah, oh, come on, slaughter me, you know what? Like, what the fuck? fuck it's it. like, give it, give it, give it. Give it. Oh, cunts on the other side but, beating it. Aye, but now it's like fucking, I'm getting 12 year olds going like, this is offensive, take it. Doing like that. Fuck off, man. That's, I think that means you're doing something right, man. When I was 12 year old, I didn't even know what problem. fucking offensive was a word. Uh, and I think, man, like. Offensive wet, man. You know what fucking this is offensive, fuck's sake? <laughs> I think I'd rather you have 12 year olds commenting on your shit than you put it up and it getting nothing. I suppose, mate, I suppose. If I've seen a video you posted that had like three likes and one of them was your auntie saying, lol, keep it up, Jordan. Like, that would make me more disappointed. I suppose. Than hundreds of people being like, fuck this cunt. Nah, no, I know. You have a bit more gratitude about it, Dana. I've, um, I've abandoned on the old social media, man. I'm not seeing you as active as much, mate. man. But is that part of your, like, your kind of like the. <sighs> Thing way, like the fucking like you not everything. Part part of it, man. It seems me it's like as I'm 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 cutting shit out and I'm seeing what it's like without it, mm-hmm. and then balancing it up. So we'll gradually maybe bring it back in and see how much it affects your mood kind of thing. Maybe. Ah, every time I go on it, mate. Every time I'm like, why, why am I here? It's... But the thing I can say that because I put years into it. I'm not just somebody that's like, oh, I'm just gonna step back, man. I was there. Constantly, ah, man. Ah, you're doing a lot. You oh. had a lot of content, oh, man. Mate, you're was, doing stand-up. Even the shit, like, there was a two-year period where I had a Snapchat, and every day for two years, everything, everything, man, just everywhere I went, everything I'd done, and people would see me, and they would go, oh, so you're on Snapchat, and that, and I, I would feel like I was doing something right, and I was getting validation. I was like, oh, this is great, but that's, like, disappeared, so nobody knows about that, but I know, man. I know, I said, it's two years, just shit, and it had for nothing, man. For nothing for cunts to go, oh, fucking, seen you were up with shops. I was mad, eh? And I go, aye, 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 that was mad. I just wanted attention, man. I just wanted the love. Ah, it's just to get your name out there, obviously, and it's just to kind of, like, fucking promote your, promote your, what you're doing at the time. Aye, and I, I mean? go a lot of comedy gigs for what I've done on social media. A lot of places were directly related to what I've done on social media. They were like, oh, do you want to come and do this gig? So I can't kind of complain about it, man. But I've cut it out, and, mate, there is nothing, there's, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. I, can't, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still putting art and stuff up there because that feels like something that is like... But even that feels dirty, man. I spent two weeks staying in a cathedral fucking in there, pens and paints constantly, grafting it, and I was like putting a photo up and I was like, I hope this gets likes. And I was like, fuck that. Aye, fuck that. Fuck when that. I was done that painting, I was happy with that painting. That painting was fucking great. I know because I spent two weeks sweating at it, going, I'm fucking, oh, all this shit. And then I put it up and people were like, oh, really good and I was like why did I even put it up Aye. I mean it's sure my luck obviously so that people can see it but as as soon as it got like 60 likes I was like right that's not a 60 like painting it quantifies it but if I'd uh, never put it up that was just my painting Aye. fucking I'm annoyed at social media I, 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 can, I can make I know exactly what you're talking about see sometimes when I'm writing tunes I put a lot of fucking my music up or my parodies I don't, I've don't. i got a lot of shit I don't put up but see a lot of tunes I'll write a tune I'll be like that's a fucking belt up like, that's amazing or oh, this is going to get fucking viral or this shit I'll put it up and it'll fucking no do that well. And then a part of me will be like that. Oh, fuck, that tune must be shite. That's and I'm like, shite. Ah, I've been wait a minute, wait well. a minute. Yesterday, this was one of the best tunes I wrote, and it was mm-hmm. shite. And I was like, fuck these cunts, you know what I mean? I don't need these cunts for fucking mm-hmm. validation, as you're saying. And it might not have been ready yet. As a fucking, as a, as a fucking jar of bees analogy, mate. You're fucking, I'm a jar of bees, mate. Imagine you've got a jar of bees, right? <laughs> right. But the jar, like, the, the sides are all blacked out, so you can't see in it. But it's a jar of bees, right? <laughs> and, you, and you've got this jar, and you're saying to cunts, I've got a jar of bees. And they're like, no, you don't, no, you don't. And you need to open the lid to show them, right? But every time you open the lid, one bee flies out because you've opened the lid. So, and then they go, I oh, fuck, it has a jar of bees, mate, it has a jar of bees, and they're happy. And see if you keep showing cunts you've got a jar of bees, 
See by the end, see no matter how much you shake it up, see when you let the lid off, it'll be no buzz. Because you've gave too many bees away, man. Ah, you need to keep the bees in the jar. That's clever. I don't know. I, know I fucking like that, Cheers, mate. man. Come up with it myself, man. I fucking, fucking put that in a quote, man. That in a quote. Jar of bees, man. I've been doing that's the fucking third podcast I've been on. Any Fuck chance guy, I get, mate. I'm coming in there like, how are you? I'm like, my jar of bees is all right. Like, tell, us, tell us more. <laughs> I, I see, I just have jar of bees right here, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, I know, man. I know. It's fucking, um, what have you been up to, man? What have you been doing? Fuck off. Oh, oh, fuck off. Oh, I've been sitting, I started for like a year ago. I started just putting up parodies on Facebook, man. Mm. And then I started, I, I was just there at boredom, locked in, mm. stopped playing the guitar for a while. You were constant, man. You were, my feed was uh, oh, I'm ravaged still, with you, man. Uh, was yeah, I, just, I got to a point at first, it was just like, ah, fuck it, for the sake of doing it. I just done it out of boredom because mm. I'd locked in. I was in the house all the time that the day and I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll play the guitar again. And I remember seeing a quote saying, this lockdown's either going to be the making of you or the, like, the breaking you kind of thing, mm. so make you mace it. And I was like, ah, right, fuck it. And I seen my guitar, my guitars lying there, gathered dust, wiped it down, and I just started playing it again. And I uploaded, the first thing I've done was like a parody of Jer- Jerry Simmons tune, but she's a belter, <laughs> I wrote I'm on a bender. <laughs> and I put it up, and it, it done quite, it shared a lot, and everybody couldn't sing me nothing, and mm. I was like, ah. Aye, but then I never thought much of it again, and I was like, ah, I wrote another mad parody. I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll find this one up and all. And after that, I put the second one up. That done quite all right, cunts were all laughing. Mm. No, it's all my pals and shit, know what I mean? People supporting us. And then I was like, after this, like, before I was always dead, oh, apprehensive about putting my shit out there on Facebook, know what I mean? But it's, then, a, it's a ready. It's, 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 uh, you a just, it's, it's one of them, is that fear of being judged kind of thing? But Aye, see, after the second video, I was like, ah, fuck it, I've done it now, so that's me out there. Then Absolutely. Since then, I just... Once you I just, that threshold. Right, and I just started doing it just as I, I hang out of boredom during lockdown. Then it, I started doing these fucking sketches. And then I started, it snowballed for them, man. Mm. Now I'm, obviously, we'll get the studio, I'm recording tunes, know what I mean? Mm. I've got, hopefully, right now, I'd be doing gigs now if it wasn't for the lockdown, mm. but I've spoke to a couple of places, they say, like, they're wanting us to play gigs and that in there. So, so that's just, like, it. step by step, zigzagging it, letting it open up as it goes. Ah, so, so right now, that's how I'm keeping all my content. I'm putting as much onto my social medias and that kind of as possible. So, now is the time, man. Uh, now so is your time to nah. fucking build up, so man. So What's your name under? What are you doing it under? 5 5 5 E-O F-I-V-O F-I-V-O So look, 5-O, five five so 50 Aye 5 five so, But it's like a name Right How's I, that going? Are people saying that to you in the street? Aye Yes, that's good, man but That's, that's, that's what I was going to say See, that's how I realised I was doing this, doing this page for about a year mm. Facebook That's me just going to like 10,000 followers And that's me like fucking putting something every week TikTok Been doing it for a month tops or something I've got 10,000 And it's like There's cunts like going like that I've been my pal getting a bit of green off this boy in uh, Bayliston and the cunts jumped there. I was in the back seat and the guys opened the door like thinking there was nobody in the back seat he's got to jump in and he's like oh fuck sorry mate he's like there's that green the boy in the front the boy knows him right and then we've been driving away after it and he's phoning my pal and he's like ah here see that boy in the back was that Hawaii 5 so that's, that's my TikTok name I was like fucking hell Hawaii 5 is that what I'm getting called because that was my like, TikTok name Hawaii 5 and I'm like ah, I'll do it man I've never had that you know what I mean I've been doing that TikTok I just showed you how big TikTok is mm. how did it feel Ah, it was, it was funny, you know what I mean? I've had cunts, I've, sometimes, but I don't know, see when I'm walking about, I'm looking at cunts and now I'm like, ah, but see, catching cunts looking at me, I was like, does that cunt what, recognise my videos? They just looked at me and I, I find myself doing that sometimes, but I know, I'm not, I'm not famous enough for cunts to approach me, I'm just, I'm famous enough for cunts to look at me twice. I couldn't relate to that any moment, I could, I completely understand all that. Now, you need to understand, I was in the hell of, like, when I was between 14 and 17, I was working on River City, which meant that that was like, and there wasn't Netflix back when I was there. Like people didn't have Prime in that. There was only, like, you know, channels. Ah, so, was so like, the soaps were the fucking hang, really? The soaps was where it was at, man. So I was like, so people, for a couple of years, people would see me and they'd be like, oh, you're, that's the boy, you're, you're the boy. They didn't know my name. <laughs> didn't know what I'd done. Just knew that they knew me somehow. And I'd go, oh, yeah. Oh, they just knew your face didn't know where, but... People would ask for autographs, and they weren't sure why. <laughs> and I wasn't sure why I was giving them it. But there was an exchange of, they were like, oh, you're, can I get your autograph? And I'd be like, you don't really want this <laughs> and I don't really want to give you it but I've done it so I was in that weird I was like am I and I'm 14 at this time 14, 15, 16 so I'm like am I famous I don't, I don't, I don't. when I'm 17 I'm still working there so then I'm not there anymore and I'm still going who's looking at me man who's wanting the autographs who's wanting uh, the uh, uh, like, yes, he's wanting an autograph oh, I, I named it man oh, the fame was short lived man and it was, it was like, I didn't even get famous I just got to 
I got breadcrumbs. It was breadcrumbing me. Uh, just keep just and get it, a wee slice of the cake with the full fucking morning. Oh, mate, man, I started craving it. I was going to book on like, kind of like, full fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, mate. So I, mate, I had Reporting to, yourself missing so cuts on your face. And uh, like I think that's what led me into all the social media stuff, man. Because oh, I really? wasn't getting any recognition anywhere. So I was like, I need to get this somehow, man. So I, mean, I, mean, I had to go to fucking counselling and shit, man. I get fucked. Really, I mean. I, man, it fucked us up because it was like, as I was growing as a person, I, like as I was developing myself as a teenager and working out who I was and what I was about, people were putting me on even if it was just this tiny amount, a strange pedestal. Like that, I'm not trying, and that even to talk about it now, there's a, there's a wee voice in my head and a cunt I went to school with sitting in the corner going, "Fuck it up, mate, <laughs> fuck it up, mate." That lives in me constantly. But I was like, when I was meeting people that age, they'd go, "Oh." How you doing, wee man? And that would that would make me go, all right, I must be somebody. Uh, yeah, I must be something because he's uh, excited. Ego boost. Uh, he's excited to meet me, so that must mean I'm something. And then I was feeling like shit because obviously, as you're a teenager, you're never feeling good about yourself, man. You're trying to work yourself out. You're trying to find out what you're about. So then I had to build this facade. If cunts were coming up to me and going, oh, how you doing, mate? Oh, fucking, oh, you fucking hurt your dad. Fucking got stabbed in the program. Mm-hmm. I couldn't go. Listen, mate, I've had a really hard day at school. I don't know about to talk to you now. Can you give me a bit of space? Cause I'm 16. That's like a growing 30 year old man. Uh, so then I had to facade it. Oh, I fucking I, I, cheers, mate, cheers, mate. I fucking all over. I'll see you again, that, mate. Pure false self. And I started building that for a young age, man. And the more like fucked up I got on the inside, the better that exterior became. And oh, right. the, uh, the stronger, the more confident, and the like, the better I looked. And especially on social media and all that. Constantly, like, everything's fucking great, boys. And I was never wanting to be like, I'm fucking, I'm so depressed. Nah, like, I'm never looking for sympathy uh, for that. No, nah, I said as a photo of your dog. <laughs> Fuck off, uh, go around, meditate, you <laughs> waster. Uh, I must have never done any of that. So I was just building this constant positive exterior, man. And I think that's what brought me to this stage in my life now, where I'm like, I'm done, no being myself, man. Even with comedy and that, I was like, for a, <laughs> for a fucking hot minute there, mate, I was Scotland's number one Muslim comedian. I'm not a Muslim, mate. <laughs> I am. I'm not. Are Muslim. you? No, mate. It's I'm, probably because of that. What was that sh- last show you done? It was a. Uh, it was you and another boy. It was a uh, bad Muslim. Bad Muslim. Uh, I, that's probably why you that, that. My, my family are Arab, but I am not a Muslim. But I went around the country for fucking the last two years, being like, "Oh, I'm a Muslim. Fuck, <laughs> oh, Muslims only take left you at first and <laughs> shite, mate. All oh, nonsense, mate. I know nothing. I just I lied, mate. Cause I didn't know how to be myself. I didn't know who to be, and I was like, I'll make some Muslim jokes. Can I get away with saying the word that rhymes with tracky? We'll not get your podcast cancelled, man. <laughs> that's what I was thinking about, and I was like, and then I remember I said that in a gig, and a, a, a comedian who was Pakistani came up to me after it, and she's like, you cannot say that. And I was like, how oh, fuck say it, come fuck her, no. And she's like, you're no Pakistani. And I was like, you fair play, <laughs> I, I know, I, absolutely, I saw. So, um, and that was like the last time, just before I finished comedy, man, I had a, a run in at a gig where I kind of, like, and this, I'm trying to work on no having enemies, man. But if I was to have an enemy, oh god. But there was this like a kind of older comedian seen my gig, man, and she was just like no happy with the words I was using, no happy with the content I was putting out. And she school teached me, man. She took me outside and she was like, "That's fucking unacceptable." Oh, Finger in the face, never. I, oh, that's. I was very confused. I've not been given out of trouble in my adult life. I was like, well, "How do I respond to this, man?" So I was going to walk out, and I was just, I was like, I'd like shut down. I was like, I don't, I don't understand what's happened here. And I went back up, and I was like. Sorry, run that by me again. Like, what's the problem? She obviously expected me. She was like, if I ever see you again, I'll fucking, you're good luck getting on a show with me, son. <laughs> and, then, I, and then I went downstairs and then came back up to be like, sorry, but could, can you run that by me again? That's not how arguments work, man. So she was a bit thrown off by that. She was like, uh, she'd all vented, man. Uh, so she was like, oh, fuck, I, just want me to kind of stir up I, this, genuinely, this hatred I built ge- up during the whole <laughs> show. So fuck, like, like, he's two minutes, man. Fuck, you put us in the spot. Yeah. I genuinely wanted to understand what she was saying. And for a long time, as lockdown was happening, I was like, fuck, oh, man, fuck, oh, see if I seen her on the street, man, fucking spit and all that. And then after a while, I was like, no, I think I, I think I get it, man. I think what she was saying is, the jokes that I was using and the stuff I was saying, I might have been funny and it might have been getting laughs, but it wasn't real. And it wasn't authentic. And I was moving into territory that wasn't really mine. I was also weirdly sexist when I looked back at it, man. And then I ended up finding out that I've got a fucking love and sex addiction, man. So I don't know if, like, subconsciously when I was writing my show, I was like, fuck women, mate. Fuck women. Hate them. Because deep down I was like, oh, I wish women would like me. I wish women would give me attention. So all that shit, man, all through lockdown, trying to get all this out, work it all out. And now, like, when I think about going back to comedy, I'm like, if I go back again, 
it's basically a fresh start. Ah, man. it's a clean slate, and I'm all materials fun. not going to work, man. Because I need to be me. I need to be authentic, and I need to be honest. And I've never done that before. Do you not like that? But they kind of like challenge you. Like it's basically it's like your fresh start. You're starting again. It's like now I'm writing. Before you were writing stuff as you're saying you had this facade. Also deep down a part of you knows this isn't me, mm-hmm. and you've got that wee unauthentic kind of feel to it. But now like if you were to get back, you know, right? This is me. I'm, these jokes are all. They're authentic, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? They're like a reflection of my real personality kind of thing, you know what I mean? Does that not like, excite you, know? It does excite me because when I was up there, I was going like, what can I get away with? What can I get away mm-hmm. with? But the reason that I wasn't able to commit to the shit that I was saying is because it wasn't real. But now I'm not, and I'm like, I don't care what I am can get away with. See if it's honest and it's true. That's it, man. That's it. Like, fucking, like, shit. Like, people are always like, oh, I don't know if you should be saying that on stage. And I'm like, no, if it's true, it's, got, it's like... I, had, I was trying to tell a joke when I was like, I was like, my dad, my dad's white, but he raised me if I was like one year old, so he was like, it's not my biological dad, but right. he'd absolutely call him my dad. And for years, he's been saying to cunts like, I can't be racist, my son's a party. And he says it <laughs> with <laughs> absolute authenticity in his heart, like, absolute <laughs> care. And I was always like, what the fuck say that? So you go, da, da. But it's true, and I've held it my whole life, so see if I have to go on stage and say that. I'm going to get people like, oh, I wasn't happy with you using that. I'm like, I don't give a fuck, mate. That's true. What happened in my household, ah, I, I feel better about that, man. That excites me. Using actual truth and not having to go, oh, I'm fucking being a bit naughty, saying words I'm not supposed to. I know. None of that. Just I, actual truth, man. I noticed that when seeing that. I, I took a wee stab at the comedy. I was writing jokes. That was like your first gig, mate. Uh, you, I used through you. Go my first man. gig. It's funnily enough, do you know Tommy Brennan? Yes. I, to- I ended up working with him. Did and, you? Because uh, I'm, pa- I'm fucking kind of part of the family, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I end up part of the family for working with the company I work with now. And uh, I was doing a shift one day, and he's like the gaffer's boy. And it was like one of my Tommy's work music, I didn't know who he was. And, uh, he, and he just, he, halfway through, just came up to me. He's like, did you do a, a gig at the, what was the place called again? Junkyard. Junkyard. I was thinking of the joke pit, man. I was close, but. Wow, uh, joke pit's a thing. A uh, joke pit, I uh, say, they kind of, they're like a kind of comedy thing. They represent people online and try and get them uh. off your. After your views oh, and stuff. Oh, fuck, fucking Ken, Ken. Ken, I like, Ken does it. Yeah, Ken say an admin in my page. Has yeah. it, man? He's quite decent, but Ken, man, I liked to we walked together for a wee bit, man. He was oh, nice. did you? But with your page? Aye, I, I was trying, and then I was like, uh, but it was great for when he was when I was. Ah, brand new cunt, mad Ken. Aye, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Aye, Tommy. Aye, then Tommy came up. He's like, did you do a gig at the junkyard? And I'm like, no, man, fuck, do you know? <laughs> he's like, oh, I was like, ah, you know, and I was like, oh, fuck, and then he's like, no, hey. He's like, I'm weird pals with Tommy. I mean, it was a last year or something. I'm weird pals with Tommy. That's my pal I'm going to see the weekend, man. Oh, no, really? Aye, yeah, yeah, but Tommy? Aye, no, no, his pal. Oh, his that's pal. That's like the mutual pal connected. Oh, right, so that's, that's the missing link. And a wee link. fucking tight net ball, man. That's aye. it, man. A fucking no. two numbers and a plus in the middle, man. One big Tommy, man. A mad burp on me. Never seen a man burp so intensely. As really? Aye. Oh, and good at it. Good at it. I don't think I've ever seen him burp in my life. We should ask him next time we see him. Oh, is it like a burp on command? No, no, he just does it. He just does it. But I'm sure, maybe he's been holding it back so he doesn't know you that well. But if you next time see him, be like, Tommy, Mate, but for me, eh? it I mean, was weird. I sat in the canteen with him and also he's been eating and all that. If any, if there's any time to burp, it's then. Mm. You know what I mean? Maybe but it's because he's in public. See, not, maybe it's to be honest, but it's like, you know what I mean? If somebody burps whilst they're eating, that's not something a redeeming feature I'm going to remember. Not I mean, if he might have burped in front of me and it's just like, aye. Oh, well, I guess it was different because I was in his house, so it was like, it was like, brrr, it's like his ground. It's oh, like, it's like, like a lion's like, roar. Like, brrr, like, for the yeah, yeah, stomach. Yes, Tommy, mate, I told me he's a good guy, man. He's an actor, man. He's been a. See, he's thinking about why I get moved back to Germany, moved to Germany anyway, but I don't know how he's getting on with that. As I say, I work with him, but mm-hmm. the way we work, we get put in different squads and shit, so I've not seen him in ages, but I'm good, but I'm pal, good pals with his brother, no? How did you find your first gig in Junkyard? <clears throat> there, I found it. Maybe was... we shouldn't have mentioned him, man. The cunt that owns it was put on a blacklist for behaviour, inappropriate behaviour. Oh, was it me too? It was me too, man, it was me too. Good. Was it that guy whose name starts with a P? I mean, we can't say it, but I, man, and, uh, I, and I was like, oh, I was like, fuck, fuck, I, I remember just, seeing that. He's got, uh, but I, just, I just think, like, I've seen the name of the, the venue and that, and then people are like, hold on, is that another place? Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? Uh, it's the whole thing, man. Like, what, is it, what is it Pete Holmes always says? He says, um... Oh, what did, oh, what did, what'd you call it when they say scandal acknowledged? That's it. I saw you need to just acknowledge it. Carry on. I saw scandal acknowledged. How well, did you find your first gig? These scandals happened in my first gig, apart from <laughs> me fucking hitting it with mad fucking bucked up jokes anyway. But I, I found it was one of one see with the comedy. I was mm. like, see when I was writing my material, I was smoking a lot of green at the time. So <laughs> to me, I was like, I was, I was like, right, see if I couldn't think you like to wait to finish a joke. And I was like, alright, smoking a joint. And then I was pure laughing my ass off. Like, this is fucking hilarious. It was some mad patter. But then when uh, it became apparent, like the minute, within the first 30 seconds of me being up there, I was like, ah, right, I only found this funny because I was stoned at my box. Ah, this isn't that funny. <laughs> and I was like, ah, I done like, this bit about like, fucking 
I came in the aim and your birds looked due to the house, so you start kicking fuck out the door and get the, it was like a domestic man. It's never happened to me, but mm. I found that I was like, right, country will be here with our birds and they'll be all be laughing and that. Mm. But then I was doing it, man, and it was like I was kinda I found myself halfway through it and I was and I was rushing through it. I wasn't taking time with it, man. Mm. I was just like <laughs> see once I realised I was like, these aren't as funny as I thought. I was kind of like, right, fucking just get us done. Mm. So I kind of started rushing through it. And then I was like, right, I'm, I'm no going half-hearted. I'm at least finishing the act. And I was doing a bit where I let Ben there and start kicking fuck out a door. She goes, let's in your fucking cow! <laughs> and all that. And then, so I was going, ah, let's in your fucking cow! And then, it was like, you know, a fucking pin drop, man. It was fucking awkward. And then I don't to- remember it being that bad, man. Uh, but maybe because I was the one. Yeah, it's obviously, it's obviously like I feel much worse. My jo- you. One of the jokes that worked, it was uh, uh, the great thing about uh, Hamilton. It's uh, what is it? What is that fucking says? It's uh, the only place in uh, no, it was like the junkyard. The only mm. place in Hamilton you find a vegan bar full of cows. I get a laugh, <laughs> and after that, it was a fucking stalemate, man. But I was, uh, I was chuffed. I was, uh, I wanted it again, but. Mm. I don't know how many comedy, I was, uh, <clears throat> I started writing, uh, in fact, uh, I done a couple of open mics we went to uh, at the, um, do you know uh, Nico? Yes. Nico, uh, it does an open mic, uh, the Sousa Cafe. Uh, that was the only gig in my life that I done my, like, just as I was starting out, it was like my third <laughs> gig or something, and I done my five minutes, and then uh, everybody done their five, and then he came back, and he was like, would you like to do another five? And I was like, is this how comedy works then? I see you do your five, and then sometimes you get another five. Never happened before or since, man. It was just that one night. I just that never one... stopped out. Aye, so I was at gigs, we went and like, right, ready for the second five, and everybody was like, there's no second five, mate. You do your five, and you're done. And I was like, <laughs> but that was Nico that gave us that, man. Aye, aye, Nico's a good guy, man. I enjoyed that much better. I was, I was much more prepared for that one, and what I started doing, I just started uh, recording it, and kind of looking back. But it was one of the ones, it was like the comedy. It was, it was a good laugh in that, man, but it's just right now, as you say, and it's a kind of one of the ones I'm forcing myself to kind of see if I'm writing jokes for comedy I can mm. do everything else but I'm there in my music side of things but I'd mm. love to go back to it in the future I was meaning to do a, a Zoom uh, open mic when you call that but I end up not doing it don't but, just don't man just don't I've done a Zoom open mic and you're essentially just because if you're talking to a tripod you're just talking to a stick I know you're, you're really just saying your jokes you're to a stick you're talking to your phone I'm talk- you're talking to that Nothing, you're telling man. jokes to a fucking phone As I've seen some decent Zoom comedy gigs but just Ah, no for me, man. No for me at all. And I think the thing with the comedy is, man, I'm just, I'm reading a book now, on it. it's like, it's like fucking. Every time I say I'm reading a book, man, that I like, I hear cunts like God poof like that, like, <laughs> oh, like in the back of my head being like, but um, I'm reading a book and it's, it's on the concept of like Dharma, which is like a fucking, it's like why these yoga words, and it essentially just means like your life's work, but not your career, just like. Just all your work, like all the work. Uh, the, the monks talk about dharma, don't they? Yeah, uh, fucking I've, I've heard the word, mate, I, but it's, I'd be a liar. Mate, I'd be guessing they try and tell you what. what uh, but mean. apparently, there's no decent direct translation, but it's essentially like, you know, like so, like, um, so my mom's dharma was to be a caretaker, or like, even though that wasn't what she'd done for a career. In her life, she looked after what her wins, she looked after her pals. She, like, she was right at the center of her dharma because she was when she was looking after people and nothing like lit it up more than looking after people. Right. Even though she never became a nurse or somebody who looks after people to get money, that was her dharma. Her work was to look after people. And the thing that I was reading is it says like I'm only a wee bit in the book, so I can't fucking take it. Where's the Cope? Um The Great Walk of Your Life by Stephen Cope. He also done a book called <laughs> Yoga and the Quest for the True Self, which is not as good but also interesting man. Mm-hmm. But, and this one this one's really good, I'd recommend it, The Great Walk of Your Life. And it talks about when somebody's doing the walk and they've got like shining eyes like, they're buzzed up, they're bright off it. And when somebody's no doing their work, then they'll be like, you know, they're deep behind the eyes, man. They'll just kind of be like, uh, just gone through the motions. And it said, like, it's better to fail at your own dharma than to succeed at someone else's. Mm-hmm. So if you you might be fucking great at comedy. You might be able to build a brilliant set and do all these gigs and, and you actually have the mechanical tools to do it. But unless you're getting lit up thinking about going on stage, unless your eyes are shining when you're writing the jokes and you can't wait to get in front of a crowd to test that, even if you're good at it, if it's no for you, it's no for you. Aye. If it's no your work, it's no your work. I agree with that, man. It's kind of like uh, being in alignment with your true self kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like Absolutely. The right path Absolutely. You're to go. And I feel that way exactly. when I'm uh, doing music. I noticed that with the first time seeing I was playing the guitar and I went up to open mics. On the lead up to the stage, seeing I playing the guitar and doing a gig and that, I tunes I wrote myself on that. Mm. It was a fucking bag of nerves. Like, ah, fuck, like, one of the ones I'm going up in front of cunts. Then mm. the minute I stood behind that mic and started fucking playing the first tune, it was mm. like, boom, for that was gone. It was like natural, and I was like, ah, wait a minute, and I was, I was just pure buzzing off it. Mm. And then just, that's what I'm thinking. I was like, ah, that's me and my kind of, my path kind of hanging with the comedy. I like it and that, man. But it's like, 
Ah, I don't just know. know it. It's just no. It's just no. Well. It's just no getting be, that same. It's no mm-hmm. giving me that same kind of feeling. Mm-hmm. And that's all right, man. I think what happens with a lot of comedians, especially comedians that have been about for a long time, like this is how comedy works, and you're like, that might be true, but this might not be how my life works. Mm. My life might not match up to what like the comedy needs to be right now. In the same way, any sort of job, man. That's why I've just left jobs my whole life, man. That's why I fucking I've started shit, built it up, patched. Gone fucking man, I was selling, uh, I was painting people's dugs for a while, man, and it was, I get inundated with dog pictures. We had like too many dugs to count, and I was like, I could make a whole business here. And I was like, I might, but do I want to spend it out? Is it my Hello, destiny? Man, Dalmatians. Oh, man, fucking, is it my destiny to sit and paint Dalmatians? Do I want to be walking in black and white spots for the rest of my life? And the answer was no. So then, I, and then I was like, what happened to you painting the dugs? And I was like, that just wasn't it. And I'm like, I thought it was going well. I'm going, it was going great. It was actually going better than I could ever have hoped, but it wasn't it. It just wasn't it. That's, and man, like, Ah, uh, like normal jobs, nine to five. You had many nine to fives. Ah, uh, but man, it's no nine to five, but it's eight to what fucking four. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a wee it's bit easier. Aye, uh, but it's. I see me. I, I totally agree with you. No as bad as I tend to. I'm, I'm chucking my job, man. Come August, like, fucking, fuck I've fuck applied off, for man. college. I'm going to be doing either acting or music, and I'm like, ah, news. It's like I've realised now, see, especially fucking the past year, see, mm. like you see the way the world's gone and mm. all that, man. Like, life's too short to be doing shit that's making you unhappy. And mm-hmm. I've had a few experiences. It's kind of. Are these signs? I don't know. Like, I believe like the universe is fucking oh, sets it in that direction, man. It's 100%. like, and it's like it's one of the ones. It's like see the fact that I think the thought of just getting up every. See, I'm getting up every Monday, mm. and it's, it's finishing the Friday. Like I'm the happiest guy in the world, and it's going to Monday. It's like where did the weekend go? I'm back to this shit. Aye. And it's like that's no good for you. Yeah, that's no. You shouldn't be feeling like that, man. It's nah. people are too accustomed to be, being like, oh, it's, it's a job, it's income. But mm. nah, mate, you don't need to be doing something you don't want to do. You know what I mean? Oh, mate, I've I have walked out of jobs my entire life, mate. With hesitation like I remember I was walking the first job I ever had was in a hotel like a, quite a nice hotel you had to pull people's seats out for them and that already oh, I was like fuck's sake. I want to put a wee napkin out of them and that like, <laughs> what I mean, if I can fuck? tuck you off as well mate relax it. happy ending under the table awful mate and um, I said to them when I started I was like it was kind of it was about November and I was like I won't walk the 24th the 25th and the 26th because my birthday is on the 24th Christmas is the 25th and I like to spend Boxing Day with my family so I won't walk the three days and the woman at the interview was like right okay we'll see what we can do and I was like no no I, I won't walk the days and she was like right no problem getting close to Christmas and uh, the notice came out and it's like, oh, I'm, it's like I'm on the 25th and 26th and I was and I said to them no I'm not I'm not going to walk the days and they were like, no, we need you to, we're understaffed, and we're all that. And I was like, no, no, I told you at the start, I'm not going to walk the days. And we're like, well, you're going to have to. And I'm like, right, well, I'm going to quit the week before Christmas then. And they were like, what do you want? Just leave us in the shit. And I was like, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Managers and all that, they're like, oh, I heard you're leaving at Christmas time. I was like, Ab- absolutely, mate, yes, yes, I am. I'm sorry about that, but that's exactly what I'm going to do. And they're like, you can't do that. And I'm like, no, I, can't. <laughs> I, I can and will, mate. And I did. And I spent, I spent 24, 25, and 26 with my family, mate. And it was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Can't buy into the illusion of a job. And like mm. when I was at Weatherspoons, man, and people were like, that's your manager. And I was like, if we were outside having a fag, they wouldn't be a manager. They would just be a person. I know. And so why, when we get in here, do I suddenly need to be like, oh, you, can I, am I all right? Am I all right? Do you think I'm all right? Never, never. Probably the ADHD as well, man. I'm just bad at jobs. I get sacked for the hard rock <laughs> cafe because I used to hide in the oranges fridge. Like, I used to leave. <laughs> ah, the bar was pure busy. How big was the fridge? It was very big, man. Walk in fridge. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 I know, but that was not a hate joke, no, I didn't even, I, I didn't even you know, know what I meant, under the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I did actually, I think, yeah. Oh, I've just fucked two minutes. I'll just say six. What do you want to see, dude, if I had things if you're locked down, and you just never come back? Where the fuck do you go? He's in the fridge. He's in the fridge. Fuck you. Like, <laughs> that. Guarantee you will never find me, so I'm fucking freezing. Don't be spending it. That's so for Ages, man, they would walk in, and I would just be, like, squatted, like, just, like, sitting like this, just, like... <laughs> And they'd be like, you're not supposed to be on the bar. Dagger, hidden waiter. Uh, and be like, you're not supposed to be on the bar. And I'd be like, ah, just five minutes, man, five minutes. <laughs> and they're like, you can't walk here. And they're like, this isn't good. Um, I never normal jobs, man. It's just not been for me. Never been for me. Um, but are they for any country? Really? Fair to see you. I, I, I think a lot of people I, need them. I, 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 no, see, like, fair to There's people out there that like, like working on ninety five, having their weekends. They're saying fair play to them, man. You're a stronger person than me. It's just no for me, man. But out of that percentage, I, I think that makes up. That no a very see I'd say there's a lot more people that are unhappy doing what they're doing than there is people that are content. Mm-hmm. And I think when people th- when I say to people like fuck jobs, they're like, oh, so you're lazy then? I'm like, no, I'm obsessed with what I've been obsessed to the extent that it's not been healthy for most of my life. Where I've been like, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna be somebody. Just put my fucking heart and soul into it constantly. And even that, I was like, I can't be asked with that, man. Can't be asked with that. And I think we was talking about like the right size of Dharma. 
Cause I was young, I was always like, I'm gonna be fucking huge. Maybe it's come five foot one, man. Maybe I was trying to be, <laughs> be like, if I, if I'm on telly, I'll be fucking. I'm on the pictures, so I'll, be, <laughs> I'll be massive. Um, but now I'm like, nah, man. Whatever the right level is for me, is the right level for me. And I've no, I've not got much say in that. You can say I'm gonna be this or that, but if it's no meant to be, it's no meant to be. So I'm, I'm, and that's the good thing about being in like a twelve step program, man. Is it's like teaching surrender. Which I've never been a fan of. I've been a fan of. Uh, I've never been a fan of. <laughs> uh, it's like when I, so I was like, I mm, too many stories, man. That's what kills me about podcasts. I'm like, is that a good enough story? Ah, like, tell as uh, many stories as you want, mate. Essentially, man, I was working in a children's designer clothes shop for a while there, man, for about three years. It was great, man, because it was family run, so there was like, it was like, it was just boys being like, do you fucking come in? Ah, just like, pure chill. I, sometimes I'd get to the shop and be like, hello, where are you? So I'd be like, ah, we'll be in two hours. I'd be like, ah, I love this job, I'm way at KFC, yeah, what a time. Um, but we essentially worked there one Christmas and it was mad shifts. And that was like, sometimes we were doing like 20 hour shifts and that. Because, oh, really? I, but because it was a good laugh, loved it, man. Aye. Loved it, like, it didn't feel like you were fucking yeah. actually working, not I mean? Aye, but essentially it would be like, Graph, 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 drink, 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 wake up, graph, graph, graph. And they'd been doing this for years because it was their business show, but I'd never done this. So I'd done that all December and come January, I had like nervous exhaustion. I was like, oh, ho, ho. That Tommy Brennan, but. That's a Tommy Brennan, but, my show, old TV. Oh, we get the same initials, man. Fucking Oh, fuck, aye, man. Good shit, man. Uh, oh, stinking, mate. I feel I apologise for that. Where did ah, we get? Sound, mate. Where did I get to? I'm him, about to fucking drop my arse in two minutes anyway, so. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll raise you a fucking, an arse fucking, but. Where did I. Where did I get to? You were talking about when you were working the name. I worked in the show, so it was like January and I had nervous exhaustion, right? So essentially that meant I was in like almost like a comatose state most days, like just waking up and being like, must go to work. Zombie. Go. I, and one of the things that let me know that something was wrong is that every day I would get in and I would print off all the till roll and I would sit and I would write plans. And I'd be like, here's my plan. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and i do that. And then I'd do that all day, throw it in the bin and then the next day I'd come in and be like, right, I'm going to get a plan together and I'm going to get a plan. And I'd done this for about two weeks before I was like, I think something might be off here, man. I'm going to go to doctors. Went to doctors, go time off. Took antidepressants, man. Walked, it was fucking great. It was really nice sorting myself out back to business. But I'd spent all that time investing in these plans that never went anywhere. What kind of plans? Um, life plans, so mind map. So it wasn't right? any day with actually the job itself? Oh, it, was uh, it was a day with everything. Health, uh, relationships. Ah, so your life plan, it wasn't like uh, plans for what I'm going to do today and work kind of thing? No, no, never right. that. It was just like, I'm going to sort myself out with this plan. This plan is going to be the plan that gets uh, me. So uh, you were constantly writing out a plan for your life and the next day changing it? Okay, kind of? I constantly. And then for that, if I had done that, I was like, I almost all plans are like that in a sense. Like you can sit and you can write what you want, but what's going to happen is what's going to happen like there's going to be shit that happens next week that might change your entire life that you kind of plan for ah definitely mate and I think I've spent so long clinging to these plans being like oh this is the next step and this is the next step and people love it people want to hear oh, what's the plan what are you doing next what's your five doing? year plan where do you see yourself oh, in five years oh I'm sure you want to see kind of routine structure and that shit? I'm incredible at just talking shit to people about that just being like oh this and that and they're like really oh, I do that just fucking the illusion man <laughs> but now I'm like I got no idea I got no idea what the plan is and I'm surrendering it. Whatever the plan, whatever I think the plan is, doesn't matter. I'm getting it up to something bigger than me. And whatever way it, I get guided, I'll go that way. When it's the right way, it's the right way. When it's the wrong way, it's the wrong way. I've never done that before. It's so freeing, mate. Do you know of the mystery of it? Or just like, I, I know I'm just like, I'm putting my faith in like fucking the universe kind mm. of thing. Essentially, I relied on myself for all these years. And it got me to a point where I was like, fuck, I'm still no doing what I want to do. And I'm still no happy. I'm like, maybe I should try relying on it and accept myself. Which is a hard thing for people. They're like, you can only ever rely on yourself, mate. All the fucking Facebook posts or like that. Fucking be a lion, not a snake, and all that. Nah, yeah. like Muhammad Ali at the side. <laughs> and look out for number one and all that. Some like, ah, fuck off, man. <laughs> some some country fucking drawing or something sat and made it and fucking Ooh. halfway through the fucking Jeremy Kyle fucking ad break or something. Hundred percent, man. And then people share that and they're like, you can only look out for yourself, man. And that that's all passion, man. That's all passion. Like we don't have that. Sounds good in a quote, know what I mean? Ah, but the quotes are lovely, man. But we don't have that much to say in the shit that happens. Like, I think people look at Conor McGregor and they're like, Conor McGregor said he was going to be a fucking number one. He said he was going to be a number one. And I'm like, it looks like that company looks like it was born for that. He was born to be Conor McGregor. Like, mm. not only did he decide he was going to do it, like, he couldn't have went, I'm going to be the next fucking Andy Murray. He couldn't have just went in and been the best tennis cunt in the world because it, it wasn't in his heart. And his heart is like, I want to bark cunts and talk shit. Aye. And he done that. And people are like, you fucking built his way up. He never done any MMA, can't probably in the jail. What would they have done if he was 4 fit 3? What if Conor McGregor was the exact same, same personality, same drive, determination, but it was four foot three? He's not. He had wee man syndrome, probably. He'd, he'd be in the midget leagues, mate. He'd be in Mexico somewhere with a referee with a pair of jeans on, mate. <laughs> no, even starting up, he'd just be going one. Oh, I'd be going, oh no, those. That'd be it. But no, he was made for it, man. And I think people underestimate the 
the uncertainty of it. And I love the mystery of it, man. I love ah, the, the magic in it. Definitely. It's because the person I've seen you look back as well. Like, you can plan for the shit all you want, but see, sometimes when the plan doesn't, it goes wrong. And you're like, ah, fuck, man, that's so. I like, fuck, oh, how'd that go wrong? Then you look back, like, a year after that, you're like, ah, oof, the fact never went wrong, I want to be here. That's what do. You know what I mean? So we're sometimes everything. the plan, it always. The plan works out for you, it might not be your plan, mm-hmm. but the plan is always going to fucking go into action kind of thing. Aye, ah, and that's what I found with my life, man. If you ever found that most of the shit that you've ended up in, you didn't sit down and go, right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. Even do it. Fucking this? Fucking this? I didn't say it. I wasn't even, like, see, at first it was maybe like, the idea was we'd be four years and we'd be just sitting sit talking shit, and two boys pulled out, and then me and Matt were going to do it, like, mm-hmm. behind, behind the camera, and then Matt was just like, I'll do the producing side. So I've ended that's up beautiful. with your, That's a beautiful system. I've just fell into it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I'm like, ah, fuck it, man. That's the way, it, that's the way it was meant to be, even. Uh, that's what I think. That's what I think. I'm like, ah, I've t- like, podcast eleven. This has got to be a fucking success. You heard it first. Know what I mean? It's like a little. Like, it's meant to be two ones. And it's and it's one of ones. See, because of the fact I've just ended up here in this position, and the fact that every time we do a podcast, something goes fucking tits up. Mm. Every time motor <laughs> breaks down, we turned up here one time for go off the equipment when it was saying his motor had a flat tire. Had to get a taxi. Away. It was like everything, mm. man. Fuck, his motor broke. He came to pick me up one day. I jumped his boat and his motor broke down. <laughs> the the tests. Right. <laughs> It's like, and that's what I'm saying, thanks to just a test of your commitment, and mm. it is, and it's one of the ones I was always prepared for this. I was always like that. We go, I'm, I'm slaughtering Facebook quotes a minute ago, but it was a lot of like the Facebook <laughs> moon omens and all that shit, mm. but it does say it's like fucking uh, along the lines anyway. I don't know word for word, but mm. it's like kind of you need know, it is your test of your commitment kind of thing, you know mm. what I mean? And I'm kind of ready for that, and it's like. The only way you fail is if you gear up. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's the way I see it. It's like you can't... Failures are lessons, you know what I mean? The only way you will fail is if you gear up and mm-hmm. I'm no gear up, you know what I mean? And in my life, I've always done shit. Like, I went, went to boxing when I was like 15, man. I was like, yes, I'm right into it. I was mm-hmm. passionate about it. And after a year, I ended up falling away from it and chucking it. Then the it's like, aye, then it's just... It was like one of the ones. I've done it with a few things and I was like, this is... Every time I've got into something, then I've always just chucked it. I've just I fell away from it and I'm like, mm-hmm. nah, man. I just feel like, what the fuck have I met a day in my life? So now I'm like, right, I've got that mentality and I'm making this a fucking... I'm sticking with it. I'm, I'm pushing through all this mm. fucking like, shit that's happening around it mm. and keeping it going, trying to make it a success yet. Mm. No, good, man. It's, and it feels, like, it feels like you're enjoying it, man. It, you just don't feel bitter about it. I was, I was, a, bit, I was a bit bitter by episode three. Like, oh, by right. episode three, I was like, oh, I need to fucking ask a cunt questions. I was like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> Why isn't he cunt asking me questions? Like, that's no, that's no mentality. That mentality is not going to carry you to episode 100. Aye. And I think I could smell that all the way back, man. Mm-hmm. And I was just, I, I feel like I prefer being on this side. Like, the whole day, I've been buzzing to come here. I've been excited to talk to you. I had to keep pulling myself back to the present because I kept shooting ahead and going, uh, I'll say this and I'll say that. Uh, and you're just thinking about your head to the end of the podcast, the fucking laughs and the jokes. Uh, like, uh, I date uh, myself, mate. You know I mean? And I was like, come back, come back. And I was like that. I didn't have that with my podcast because I was like, I wasn't. The thing is, I'm not that interested in what somebody's got to say <laughs> unless they're interested in what I've got to say. Uh, I'm so uh, fragile that I need somebody to go, tell me about you before I can go, no, you tell me about you. But if I need to walk up to this guy and go, so tell me about you, mate. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. That was a really nice story. I was glad you fucking tell that one. Uh, and uh, just what you were saying about uh, failure, man, is like, I was reading, I oh, fucking half read another book, bro. I half read another book that was talking about um, in, uh, goals. And it's like, the way that we get to our goals isn't through achievement, 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 achievement. It might work like that, but it isn't. It's like, it's uh, like a missile, like a heat seeking missile, right? If you fire it for a ship, it goes fucking fires. And the white, it's got a wee thing in it that's going to track where it's going to go. And if it goes too far to the left, it'll go, you're going too far to the left, mate, correct yourself. And then it'll correct itself and it goes too far to the right. It'll go, you're going too far to the right, mate, correct yourself. But it has to fail its course to know where it's gone. It has to go off target to know that, oh shit, that's no right. It knows where it's gone in the end up. But the way that it gets there isn't a straight line. The way that it's getting there is by constant mini corrections. And that, it seems to be like, with the podcast, as we've done, you launched four boys. Oh, two boys pulled out. Oh, we're going now. It's going to be us two presenting it. Oh, no, I'm just going to do production. I'm going to go for it. Constant many connections. He's nobody's wanting to go. He's got an end goal inside. He's like, I have a shit hot podcast. He's like, getting there, man. But you just need to have the wee failures. Ah, aye, yeah. 100%. Well, with every failure, we've kind of learned from it. No, I mean, mm. we've used it to kind of better it. But I, as you were saying... Who's editing? That yeah, man right there, it. Matthew Harrop behind I the behind the laptop. Behind the camera, I'm not, I'm not good in front of cameras. That's how fucking. Right. Uh, so you're editing sound and video. 
I pretty much that mean, must I be horrendous, mate. Actually, just making up as I go, mate. Yeah. Fucking, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do this without methamphetamine. Like <laughs> when I was when I was doing my editing, man, I had to just pop some Ritalin and just fucking. Uh, uh, I, I would fucking see you. Then I was trying to get Ritalin, and I was trying to get speed. And ah, you was trying to get like micro dose speed, but we've actually found oh, a, a, a better alternative. We've been micro dosing magic mushrooms. You've been micro dosing magic uh, mushrooms. Right. No, uh, do you ever heard? Do you ever try that? Well, I've got one story of microdosing, man, right? So it's like... So Magic mushrooms? Mm, acid, man. I'm a, I'm, oh, I, I, I love acid, man. That's my fucking... As I, I put acid as, like, one of the fundamental things that brought me to be the person that I am, You ever heard of 1PD? What's 1PD? It's like a supplement. It's basically like a... Com- it's, com- it's the Netherlands. They sell it in a sweet tub. I wish I had the tub with me. And uh, so it's basically like a tenth of an acid. Mm-hmm. But it's like a, a microdose, but it's no a tenth of LSD. It's like a similar compound. Mm. It's pretty much the same. And it's, uh, it's pretty much, if I could advertise it, I would say it's you, but on a good day. So you take it, take it in the morning, mm-hmm. the last about 12 hours. It's not a noticeable thing, mm-hmm. but you just take it, you're alert, you're on the ball, you're happy. Oh, see, uh, some of my best days I've took taking this. Mm-hmm. It's a supplement in the Netherlands. Can I get it out here? Mm-hmm. I could probably get you some. You can order it online, but you need to do a mad international bank transfer and they send it. But Is it Bitcoin in that? No, I'm not. I pay, I pay, I pay, you can, just you can, you need go to your... Bitcoin. Not that. You can pay the Oh, you can pay Bitcoin? Oh, I wouldn't. I don't want it. It's just that if it was... No, no, no. no. You can pay cash if you want, but you just... It's C it's because it's a, a Netherlands fucking bank account. You mm. need to just... You need to transfer it to them and you need to do like mm. international bank transfer on mm. your... I had the Bank of Scotland app, so it was quite easy to do, you know what I mean? I've the Bank of Scotland app, man. Bank of Scotland, well, when you need us. Bank of Scotland, man, my, my app says it needs to update now, and I can't use it. Then it was like, right, download the update. Now the upload, update's no downloading. And um, no, and I forgot my username today on the mobile app. So I'm like, downloads no uploading, the uploads no downloading. And I just uh, fuck, I can't handle it. Nah, uh, it's fucking no happening, man. And this was just earlier, and I was like, ah, fucking hell, man. Very interested, man. We'd, we'll fucking we'll talk after the podcast. Talk after the podcast, but tell but me about for I, yeah. microdosing, right? So MD, who doesn't know what microdosing is, if you imagine the, if you imagine one square is like a hundred milligrams of acid. What you would then do is dissolve that that one square into a hundred milliliters of water, meaning that one milliliter of water equals one milligram of acid. So if you were to have ten milliliters of water, you would be having ten milligrams of acid. So I got myself a wee vial, a wee fucking plastic syringe, hundred milliliters of water, put one tab in, let it dissolve, and then I would you know just ten milliliters spray it into my mouth eh, like that. Right. Um, and then I read online it was like you kind of do it with tap water because if you date with tap water it kind of wears away the acid and you don't get the effect oh, right. and I was like oh fucking wasting my time man so I just gubbed it I was like I'll see what happens man I was on my way into work turns out this was written by an American and they've got obviously shape for water <laughs> not the clear crisp <laughs> Glen countryside man not at all so I was sitting and working I was like Oh no, that's oh I'm coming up. I was like, this is not good. Uh. So I was sitting and walk, and man, the boys that walked with me, man, they were sound. Like I'd, I'd come in some. There was one day I came in, I'd been out tripping acid all night, and I came in like I was so at my nut that like the 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 train stopped at Central Station, and I looked at the woman, and I was like, what did I do? She was like, what? She, I was like, what did I do? She was like, just press the button and open it. I was like. <laughs> Thank you. I like showed up and they're like, "You are stinking, mate. Go home." Eh? But other than that, the three years I was there, they were quite happy with me coming Which in. Which job was this? Um, I uh, was in the, the, oh, the, the ask... shop and the shop. Oh, the, right. the shop. Uh, so I went in, man, and I was tripping my nut, and I kept thinking that my boss was looking at me behind my back. So I was sitting on the computer going, <laughs> well, I know, I got a spin around like that, and he wasn't looking at me any times. And I was like, "This is not good." I had to go to my granny's sixtieth that night. It was my granny's sake, it was man. my granny's sixtieth birthday and I was tripping a whole tab of acid, man. So I made it through the shift just being like, This is not good, I am away, yeah. And I was on the train, gone there, and I was just like, This is horrible. There's no way to get out of this. There's nothing <laughs> I can do. Aye, I was my gran- and I get into the house and I was I was in I was in in my head, I was going like you're all right, mate. Just relax. Like nobody's gonna know. My grand's like, you talk to yourself. I'd be talking out loud. Eh? Like I, 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 I was away, and I was like, I, I've been drinking, grand. She's like, you're drinking. I'm like, I'm steaming. And, I was like, <laughs> and she's like, and then I was like, oh, disappointed in that. And I was like, whoo. I managed to get away with it, man. I managed, I, but, but the thing is, right, I've got my uncle, man. And my uncle loves, he's, he gets stoned every day, man. Like, fucking loves mushrooms and all that. And he just, well, he's a good sit, guy. He's a good guy. I love, love my uncle, man. And I was just sitting on the couch, and he just came up to me and went, you steaming? And I went, I and he went, ha ha, <laughs> and that ha <laughs> resonated through me, and it just went like ha ha no, I no, I no, and I was like, oh, I know, I know, but then I say it, man, and I was absolutely fine. Um, that was my one experience with microdosing. Uh, I've not <laughs> tried it since because I mac- I macrodosed. Oh and fuck's sake, are you overdosed, uh, man? So have you been fine? It's dynamite because it's no, it's no. You don't feel as if 
Is he? I, I, I hate telling cunts, see when I'm trying to get cunts to try it, I hate saying it's a 10 to an acid because they're like, fuck that. People were scared that when I used to do comedy about acid, people would go, oh, you must be fucking crazy. They don't understand it, it's just like. Too many fucking scare <laughs> mongers. There'll, there'll be cunts that were taking gear at the interval going, acid? No, 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 no. I no. fuck take that shit. <laughs> what I mean? Aye, so, how you find it? I, I do mate, oh, honest to God, man, it's like, we've only really just got in it, it was uh, someday before they told us about it, and so we've only like, just recently passed a couple of weeks fun out about it, but I tried it, man, take it in the morning, and honest to God, man, it's taking, you're creative as fuck, you're just, mm-hmm. you've got a spring in your step, man, mm-hmm. you feel fucking amazing, feel tremendous, man. That's fantastic, man, I've been doing a lot of the Wim Hof breathing. Oh, mate, you're fucking preaching at the choir, man. Oh, uh, man, you're the man. Ah, I mean, I mean, and we get hot tub at the back, that's obviously... Oh, it's a fucking a cold fucking uh, water. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, the, it's the lifestyle, man, and that's been the first thing that I've done in a long time, that gives me a continual high through the day, I was doing it on the bus here and that, just quietly, but... Cuts last year, right? But uh, it's been okay. I hate shit that's like, you know, if you do this in two weeks down the line, and if you keep it up, then you'll start to see some noticeable changes. Like I'm, no, I'm fucking. I'll, I'll forget that I was doing it in two weeks down the line. I need it now. <laughs> and the Wim Hof breathing is the, the like one of the things that I've done. That I'm like, I am high right now. Fantastic. I can go about my day remaining a wee bit high. Plus. The Ritalin, obviously, is fucking a nice boost. Aye, Aye, it's but, a nice wee cocktail. But I wasn't like this when I... I was, so I was on, like, 52 milligrams of uh, Ritalin. I'd, like, worked my way up for 18, and I didn't feel this good. And then for, I started doing the Wim Hof, I'm back down to 36, but I feel about four times better than I did on oh, the 52. Really? So I know that a lot of it is to do with the Wim Hof, man. Um, also, if you need some Ritalin, man, fucking... Aye, that's your man for it. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, but the Wim Hof... Maybe the ever... edit and fly by, yeah. Have you done the, ever done the Wim Hof breathing and let her run? I've never, I don't fuck with running, man. Ah, you know, nah. No. It's really good for your cardio, mate. See, like, the knees, like, mate, the knees. Nah, mate, my knees are caught. I think I need mm. to get, I've got flat feet. Like, my, my feet are like, fucking flat as a fucking pancake. I you're could, big as well, man. You're tall, could, so you're going to be carrying a fucking lot of fucking... You. It's like, but they yeah, actually. Like, see, I've not got a heel, I've not got an arch. Is that bad, or is that good? It's, it's bad, because you can fuck your knees. Mm. Know what I mean? It's like, <clears throat> I've not got an arch. That is strange. That's just like a fucking take, man. Aye, ah, absolutely, man. Look. I've just, I'm not getting arts. Man, you see that? It looks like uh, the, it looks like the fitting Monty Python man, just straight flat. It looks dude. like a Python man. <laughs> First thing will wrap around you and fucking strangle you. <laughs> I about right in the no, but eh, uh, fucking, I so, because I go out runs man, but mm. I need to start, I need to get an insole now. Mm. Oh, I know, I've always needed one, but I never knew I needed one. H- so tell I, me about running. Tell, k- pitch running to me, sell it to me. Sell I'm, it I'm going to look for a can out here, well, but I'm listening. Well, I'm the guy, I'm the guy to hang with because see running, I never used to, I couldn't run the length of myself, mate, honestly, God, I grudged it. I'd be blown at my ass, fucking hated it. And I can't mean, it was during the lockdown again, fucking shout out to the lockdown. <laughs> but uh, it was during the lockdown, I just started, I'd gone out runs, man, and that's how I started doing the cold water. Mm. I was going out runs, and uh, this is before I really knew about cold water therapy. Mm-hmm. And I would go out a run, and I'd like to jump in a cold bath after it, to see how we inflammation that. Mm-hmm. And I just started enjoying, I was jumping the cold bath and coming out and like, I feel fucking energised. I had the buzz, man. Then oh. see when I was getting a hot bath mm-hmm. again, man, I was like, this sluggish. I am hot as hot. Shite and I'm I, then, and I just knew I'd, I'd never get a hot bath. I, I had one during the night last night, so I woke up heavy sweating, so you just, see when I wake up in the morning, it's hard to jump in a cold bath, because you're that kind of cold way you're ready. Mm-hmm. But that's the first one I've had in ages, man. It's cold baths all the way now. Then I just started having a cold bath every day. Mm. Then I started getting into the Wim Hof breathing. Mm. Then uh, somebody was like, ah, nah, you need to do the, the Wim Hof breathing with the cold bath. Mm-hmm. That's how it, like, you get the it. benefit. All right, but I started doing it. But have you ever done the Wim Hof breathing and see during the breath hold? Have you ever started tripping? Aye, man, my, me and my wee brothers, they, I've managed to get them in it, man. We are passing it constantly. Ah, I did it, man. First time that happened to me, I was sitting, I've got like a wee like, unit next mm. to my bed, and I was like, ah, doing it. The first time I did it. And then like, I came to, it's weird, man, it's like, it's like sleep paralysis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like, I came to and I was like, where the fuck am I? And I was like, what is going on? I didn't know what's happening. It was like, it was like, and I was like, I couldn't move. And I was like, what is happening here? Mm-hmm. Then I was like, I think I was a stroke you had, bro. <laughs> it's, it's what it felt like, mate. I was like, oh. then I kind of like, I came out of it and then I had like, not my unit here. And I was like, ah. Whoa, what the fuck happened there? Mm. And I was like, ah, it was mental, man. But I, it was like, absolutely, because what I, happened is my wee brother said to me on round two, he went, I got just passed out there. And I was like, oh, that's good, that's all right, man, transcendental, fucking, all that shit. And then on the third round, I done it, and I went like... <sighs> <laughs> that's what it's like. <laughs> and he was like, is that real? And I was like, is what, like, well, I was, I was like, is what real? What's he talking about? And I was like... Oh, oh yeah, it's weird. Like, I, but see, man, I, I was then I was followed for a while there, so I was then waking up first thing in the morning, empty stomach, no, no water, yeah. nothing, and then the wind off breathing, and see if you get an empty stomach, that's where you're more likely to get the like the breath hold 
pass out. So yeah. I was doing like three rounds and it was getting to a point I was like, ah, I was holding back in the breath hole because I was like, ah, right, I wasn't liking it. I just felt a bit, I felt a bit, see after that, a bit like he didn't shut that. Well, apparently, right. man, um, I know a guy, there's a guy who does it, like my sponsor walks away a guy who like, he's got like a, a house suit in maybe Lanark somewhere. Is it Vortex? The Vortex suit? I asked him to come like, on the podcast, but he wasn't into it. He's, not into it. Like, mate, he's just really love to try that. He's just into fucking living, man. Ah, he's just, he's, that kind of guy. Ah, he's he's like it, man. His name's Jim, and he's no calling himself Jim Hop, which is <laughs> it's a fucking um, travesty. I, I can't give credit for that, man. That was uh, somebody else came up. With. Oh, was it? I, but uh, I'll take it, man. Um, they're not on a podcast, so fuck them, man. <laughs> uh, I know, but he was saying um, you might be squeezing at the front of your head. I think a lot of times when you're squeezing, you just squeeze up to the head in general. See if you squeeze to like the the the, the uh, fucking the third eye chakra and that. I think it helps to flow the blood through the brain instead of just away from it. Oh, see? If you're just kind of going... Right, try going like I'm trying to go like into the middle of the brain. Aye, I think That's you'll, why, you'll why be squeezing at the front so you're kind of... How the fuck through. did you do that? Um, just kind of like... So if you feel just... If you just squeeze the way you've been squeezing, you're like... It happens in your neck and it's like kind of like... Aye, aye, because see, I've done that. See if I... Like, can I frown? Can aye, I, I frown? Because like, I'm doing it... Aye, and, I, and it's gone right as if it's really tapped me. I right. thought I was doing it right that And way. I've been doing that, and I've no passed out for I've been doing that. It's been quite good. Have, people you, have don't you felt know a difference doing that, mate? Aye, I've, been, I've no passed out for uh, I started squeezing to the front, but I'm still getting the, the high and the buzz and that kind of warmth. That, that oh, really? I'll need to try that first thing in the morning. But my breathing's a bit off the new, my horns on the tingling, so I need to experiment a bit. And I think I'm not going um, deep enough, but I had one today and my horns were tingling again. Nene, mate, wait, 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 is it a 10 minute one? It's like I get the app, game. man. Can't oh, I recommend the app enough, man? Six quid and he's got a wee bubble and he goes like, and his voice is on it and all that. Oh, I, just, voice is mad. I just watched you, there's, there's YouTube videos mm. and, it's like, and there's one that's like a 60 breath one. Mm-hmm. It's one for like 20 minutes, like three rounds. Mm-hmm. And during the breath hold, he done it on the Russell Brand podcast. Aye, that's, that's, that's that what, is where I came across it, man. Aye, and that's when you hear he goes like, ah, the crocodile does not go The crocodile does not go. We get into the deep. His deepest. voice was made for fucking meditating. That's mad, man. man but it's like his voice was genuinely like, it's like you're listening, it's just pure, yeah. oh, it's some... On the app, you can select tunes, and one of the tunes is not made for the Wim Hof, man. One of the tunes is like him going, hey hello, 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 That shaming fucking Aye, sounds. Brutal. That was the one Willie Brath passed out on. He's like, brother, I was not comfortable coming back. Uh, he's like, I don't know why I come back listening to that. And I was like, but oh, otherwise he's there and he's gone, you get into the deepest. He's like, if you're doing it, keep going, man. It's uh, real good. Like, uh, <laughs> he's brilliant. He's, he's such a serving uh, voice. On the third round, he goes like, animals do not do this. What? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I recommend it, man. MD that's feeling a bit depressed, man. MD that's got chronic pain. The Wim Hof breathing, man. Check it out. I try and I'm, I'm, I'm a bit fucking... I say I recommend it to cunts, mm. but I recommend it like, with the Wim Hof breathing and that fist and mm. that fist is doing the throat. <laughs> you know what I mean? But That's the thing, man. Like I remember I was shouting, at, I was telling my wee brother, I was like, don't tell people about it because they won't understand. And my stepdad was like, I hate saying stepdad, man. Automatically, beast. And I like, straight away, man. I was like, <laughs> and Ma's boyfriend is also like, fuck it, dodge. So I was like, uh, the, Ma's the, boyfriend uh, makes him seem like a bit of a stranger. Uh, the cunt that lives in my house was saying to me, right? He was saying to me, <laughs> uh, he was saying, like, I've got to jump in the pool, but I'm not going to do the, the breathing and all that. And then I was like, I'd had like a couple of and I was like, I was like, that's your fucking ego. I was like, you're being a fucking ego maniac, mate. You don't understand. I know, I know about the breathing. I also, and I was like, uh huh. I was like, hold up, catch yourself. Uh. I was like, this is why you're not supposed to tell people because it's impossible to pass on good information to people if they're not ready to hear it. That same shop that I walked in, lot of fucking love for the shop today, man. Shout out to Junior Station. Uh, it was uh, the boy that I was walking with lost a lot of weight. He was big and he lost a lot of weight by the intermittent fasting. Aye. So he was just fasting all through the day, lost tons of weight. People would come in, say, fuck, mate, you look amazing. Your skin looks great. What happened? And he's like, oh, but then the fasting. And they're like, oh, that's no good for you. And then they would sit and argue with him about reasons for eating breakfast. And he realised after doing this constantly day in, day out, he's like, people don't actually want to know. People don't. People want to lose weight, but when I tell them how I done it and what my method was and what would work for them, they don't want to know because they're just not ready for it. So eventually, people go, "How'd you lose weight?" And he's like, ah, "I just diet and that." And, uh, it. and that was the level. People go, "All right, cool." And I think that's with everything. Uh, if it worked for you, fantastic. If somebody's no like um, what's it? Uh, the book oh, autobiography of a yogi by oh, a yogi. Is that mate. Ragnar fucking? It's a big name. Names on Joe Rogan. Oh no, he's definitely did no man. He's oh, definitely he's did. Did, no. Maybe the guy that wrote it. Wasn't the guy? I don't know. Anyway, in that book, he talks about people being like nuts. Is like if you get a nut that's um no ripe, if it's like green, no matter how hard you fucking try to crack it, no matter what you do to it, it just will not crack because it's not ready yet. But if you get a nut that's ripe and it's almost ready to come out of shell, just the lightest tap 
we'll send it splitting because it's ready. Mm. People are like that as well. You can't force somebody. That's true. That's um, fucking makes sense, man. And I find that if you're talking to somebody and you're like, you're just no getting it, and like maybe they're just no ready to get it, but it's hard because you know it worked for you. You fucking cracked, mm. and you're like, oh, oh, fucking do this, but can't sneak up time. Because people don't want to believe that. Like, let's see, people are that used to like obviously breakfast. That's the most important meal of the day. <laughs> fucking. Uh, and, if Companies you're feeling depressed, take antidepressants, go to the doctor, they'll give you medication, that's the kind of shit that'll help you. Mm-hmm. And, you're like, you're like, no, and you tell somebody in the evening, jump in a cold bath, that's mm-hmm. going to help you. Couldn't somebody ready oh, no. that? Oh, nah, no. Fuck like, that. No, no, no. Uh. It's because it's like, see if you could put like, the Wim Hof breathing in the cold water therapy into a pill, cunch would, you'd be a millionaire. Oh, I it, man. Oh, cunch, I would, cunch would take it religiously. Well, there's something really interesting, man. I don't know if I should be passing on this information, man, but fuck it, man. I was we talking can edit to, it. I was talking to a guy who does the Wim Hof stuff, and he was saying he used to do it for free. Um, I wasn't talking to him, man. That was a lie. I'm trying to stoke many lies. A guy I know was talking to a guy oh, who had right. done the Wim Hof breathing stuff, and he said that he used to do it for free, rent out a community centre, you know, fucking change your life with breath and all that. Nothing happening, man. Nobody would come, nobody was interested. The minute he started charging high prices for it, people were all oh, at it. <laughs> people, people were ready for it. People want to feel like they're suffering something. Uh, people want to feel like they're sacrificing something to make their life better, but they won't accept it for free. Right. As if it's getting no value if it's free. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the male money at the pay, the male well, value. Why is he no charging for it? And then, but some people are like, well, fuck it, that's shocking charging all that money for cold water and breathing. You're like, you didn't want it. Aye. You didn't even want it. Like, it's on YouTube and now. You've no clicks it. But I bet you if I fucking put an advert on your Facebook and it's like, change your life in five minutes, you'd be like, oh, tenner. <laughs> Direct debit, come out every month. I also need to stop. Um, Shouting abuse at imaginary people. I think that's a really big one. Ah, man. fuck the imaginary bastards. Fuck them, mate. Yeah, fuck them, mate. I'm sick of them, mate. Breathing in my imaginary bastards. Jump in the cold bath and breathe, you fucking yeah, new bastards. You fake cunts. I know, man. That's it. In my head, constantly. I'm like, these cunts. And I'm like, who? <laughs> who? What? But it, it is, it's like, I'm way you there, mate. Mm. No, I mean, I feel like a pure fucking disciple of this shit, but it's true. It's like, now it's starting to, I think it's, right now it's taking off because. Mm. I jumped, I went up to Balk. I finished work yesterday and I jumped in a cold bath. Done my 10 minutes. I like to jump in the cold bath and see. Ten minutes in the cold bath? Ten minutes, I'll usually do a day. That's very interesting. I'm at two or three. You think ten's a good time? I've been doing it a while. I've done mm. 20 a phone, man, but like, by accident. But what I do is, see, before, I was, I was setting like a timer and all that shit, but I was like, trying to figure out how long I'd been in. So what I do now, I go into YouTube and see you get the mad 10 minute motivational videos where it's like a guy screaming down at the phone. Like, do, 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 do. This is your destiny! Do, 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 do. No, the guy's talking, it's like, it's like fucking, I don't know, like Tony Robbins and shit like that. It's uh, like an excerpt. You the, were built! For this. Oh, that All shit, that. man. I, so I'll find a 10 minute one and I'll stick that one and I'll listen to it. Do even I listen to that? And then, then it'll be like, when that's finished, I'll be like, that's 10 minutes. Mm. So I jumped out. So I done that yesterday and as I was getting dried, I literally jumped out. My pal phone is like, we've got a bout to jump in the water. You want to come? I was like, ah. Are they jumping in the water because it's cold? Ah, I didn't enter it at all. Good, that's, that's a so, good group. Ah, it was yesterday. That's nice. Because it was a nice day and all that. Fuck, I'll drive up. My pal had the van for his work. We flew up, man, and I was still kind of. So obviously you get the after drop after it, man, you're still oh, trying hey, to warm up. My wee brother's a reptile, man. He's out the pool like that. Back to normal, I'm like a little cardigan, fucking hat, gloves, shoes. Aye, uh, doing star it's... jumps and all that, uh, rolling about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> He's just chilling, man. Anyway, you're cold. Aye, uh, yeah, so I was kind of cold nearly up, man. Then we go there and I was like, I had shots on. I was like, fuck, a bit cold. But I was like, fuck it, I'm doing it anyway, man. And I jumped right in. Go into it, man, and then we were in there, man, and it was cunts out walking their dogs wrapped up, hats, really hats, <laughs> that one. And they were, every cunt walked by, we were looking at us, and we, a wee guy was running like, there's shirts in the bar, what are you doing in the bar? <laughs> uh, we, we are the shirts, we man. Get out of that, man. Then we came out, we were getting dried, and a mad woman's taking photos of us, what? Oh, yeah. And she's like, I, I fucking, she's like, I've always seen people on Facebook jumping in the water. I was like, listen, hen, it's taking off, it's good for you. And she's aye. like, oh, I, I, I need bother on that. Mm. But it's like, you're seeing it, cunts are seeing. Cunts got getting in a group and jumping a lock in the, like, the middle of January. Cunts are like, ah, what is, what what is, is behind us? happening here? And the world's all sad because of lockdown and that. So it makes sense that then the, the, like this counterbalance thing is kicking up, man. And it's nice. It is nice. And I think people, the people that date will be the people that date and the people that don't the people that don't. I've been trying to meditate for years. I paid 260 quid for a meditation course when I was 15 years old. Fuck off. 15 years old. That was 10 years Who ago. Who took now. that off, you the bastards? They're actually quite good, man. They're old and that's you in for life. You can go back for them any time, as many sessions as you want. Oh, you know, right, lifetime so is that a lifetime membership? Just a cunt, just a cunt in a bus, like, wee man, you want to learn how to meditate. 
Um, <laughs> I nearly get a uh, different story. But I know I've done that and I've been trying to meditate daily for years and I've just no been able to do it, man. Because when I meditate, I feel quite good, but you need to sit for 20 minutes and it's a long ADHD. I'm like, oh, fuck, because I could do No, always you shit. can do five minutes if you want. I, I was well, not for this specific oh, t- kind see. of meditation, but it promised all these wonderful benefits. And I was like, I kept trying for all these years, but the Wim Hof stuff is giving me the benefits. No, uh, accumulatively, it's giving me them immediately. Mm. It's like, here are the benefits. You feel fantastic, man. And the microdosing also a similar thing, just immediate feeling like fantastic. Mm. You should try micro. Have you ever tried micro dosing mushrooms? No, but I would be interested, man. You I should, do enjoy mushrooms. It's like I take, let's see, like a wee. <laughs> the last time I took mushrooms, I ended up greeting because I realised that my my favourite colour was blue, and I'd been saying for years that it was red, and I was just like, oh, what a fucking contrast, ah! Uh, uh, I was like, could have been don't, green or nothing. I don't I don't like like the pure opposite. <laughs> I think it's blue. People are like that's alright. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that was. I had a, a couple of times when I was taking acid, man. I thought I was a woman for a good wee, a good period there, man. Like, uh, like, every, for like, uh, uh, like, for sometimes like fucking six years, I'd be like, lads, I think I'm a woman, and everyone'd be like, you sure, mate? And I'd be like, and I'd sober up and be like, no, I'm alright, man. Think I'm pretty good, man. Think I'm pretty good. I'm a guy. Um, my favourite colour's red. I'm a guy. My favourite colour's red, mate. I don't know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Like, blue shirt for me. Um, but then I ended up, man. I was fucking. I had like a bit of break down uh, a couple of months ago, man. I ended up talking to my pal who's trans. So she's like, she's like, she used to be a guy, and then she got like whole. Surgery and shit, not. And I was like, listen, sometimes when I take acid, man, I, I think I'm a woman. Am I? Am I trans? And she was like, she's like, no, nah, fuck off. She's like, you're full of acid. She's <laughs> like, she's like, maybe you're not expressing yourself the way you, that you feel that you should. Maybe because you grew up in a scheme, and you know, if femininity is like regarded as like being homosexual, so maybe you've no expressed your gender properly. But she's like, no, until you are like in a bathroom with a knife hanging out of your cock because you feel like it doesn't belong in your body. Can you say you know what it's like to be oh, trans? And I, I, and that made me go like, can I hit home a bit? I was like, I taking a bit of acid and going, oh, do you look nice. <laughs> I was like, ah, Jesus. So that really put things into perspective for me. It's a powerful quote, like, ah, it was intense, I but, That's when it kind of hits home. I I've seen you saying obviously you felt a woman, and she's saying, I maybe it's. A feminine thing. Maybe you're saying they're talking about your jokes and all, not I mean mm. it was always kinda of sexist, maybe that was d- something deep. Absolutely, in, man. Maybe there's a connection I, there. Absolutely. I think there's definitely something in me that I've always been a bit like, um and I think a big part of it is like so being so for addicts a lot of like it's different for drug and alcohol people who are people who are addicted to substances because it's nice and simple. Don't touch these substances, work through the reasons why you want to have these substances and don't do them. For people who are addicted to sex and love, it's something completely different because it's so hardwired into your DNA because it's it's about how you relate to other human beings and how you relate to yourself. That covers everything. It covers your work, your finances, the way you feel about yourself, the way what you see when you look in the mirror, how you talk to people, um like so like people who um like I just love hugs, you know, I'm a big hugger. It's people who are sex addicts end up being like, oh, I wasn't actually ever into hugs. I was just using that as like a way to get some like physical affection off people. Oh, right. All that stuff, man, that it all bleeds into. And oh, what was the point in that? What was the question you just asked me there, man? I was taught about, uh, I was taught about, see, obviously, I, like the femininity, and then it was absolutely, like, well, back to maybe that's something, something a bit deeper. Uh, so I think it was like, so I think one of the things is that it was like, so I was fucking, I, was, uh, I always like struggled to, I think it might be because I was raised by my ma as well, but like a single ma for years. So I was always a bit more effeminate. And I was all, but like I naturally wanted to be, but I think the reason that I talk the way that I talk and I act the way that I act is because it was all just me trying to be like, I'm no gay, don't think I'm gay, I'm no gay. So I was like, oh fuck, how you doing, me? Oh fuck, no seen you in a while, no, <laughs> that, mate. But maybe I was like, well, oh, how you doing, man? And yeah, we fucking we horn shaking a pat in the ass. I know that idea. <laughs> but maybe that's what I was in. And I think a big part of me, a big part of my sex addiction was feeling that if I if I can't prove to people how manly I am by shagging hundreds of birds then they're going to think I'm gay, which is a mad jump. But I, when I look back at it on my teenage years, the minute that I started having sex was the minute that people seemed to be a bit more like, oh, you're, you're having sex? Oh, uh-huh. Shagger, uh-huh. Elliot. Absolutely, man. And I was like, oh, I can be a shagger. Fantastic, great. People will like me then. People will respect me then if I'm a shagger. And that made, and it all came, it was all based in this insecurity and this fear. And I think that's when people, like, and people big up, like, people who are fucking quote-unquote shaggers. Like, well, he's a fucking bit of a shagger. You're like, do you think deep down inside he, he feels, like, vulnerable and lonely and he's trying to find affection in the arms of anybody again? They're like, no, no, he just loves shagging, eh? <laughs> just loves pussy, man. <laughs> Fuck it. All right, all right. I don't think so, man. I think for, maybe there are some people who have, like, a really good healthy relationship with sex, but I think for people who use people as drugs, um, and I can say this myself as well, because I spent years going, I just fucking love shagging me. But what it was, was inside, I didn't feel good enough. I didn't feel 
Like, I was accepted enough. I didn't feel like people liked me enough. I was worried people were going to fucking call me gay and throw me out the gas milk. Just take me to the barrier and be like, oh, stop it there. You're the fucking... Don't come back until you shag me up. <laughs> and um, so I was like, my, the way that I was proving myself was through all these romantic relationships and sexual relationships. And now that all that's dropped away over these past few months, I realise that it's like, uh, nobody gives a fuck, man. Nobody cares. It's on the heat. It's all in the heat, man. But if I, unless you deal with this shit and go, right, well, why do I feel like this? What is this about? What do these things mean? It'll stay there, man. And that's just like, the thing I found interesting about sex addiction is it talks about how people who are addicted to not only sex, but sex and love. Sex addiction sounds quite nice because oh, a fucking shagaholic out here just loves riding. But what do you mean you're addicted to love as well? It means like validation for people. I just want people to... I want to feel loved. Oh, almost, I I almost definitely goes back to my dad boosting before I was born. So then there was that like, oh, he left because I'm shite. I need right. to make sure everybody else knows how fantastic I am. And that's been my whole life. I think the acting, the comedy, everything has all just been an attempt to go, Daddy, Daddy, do you love me now? It's <laughs> 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 just like me on stage being like, my dad left when I was younger and cunts are pissing themselves and people and I'm like, fuck you. Single tear in that. Um, but now that that's all fell away, that's why I'm trying to go forward with this like, honesty and openness and all the shit that I never wanted to talk about before I need to talk about it because no talking about it drove me to this fucking mad place where I was just tinder constantly fucking beating it four or five times a day just because I didn't know what else to do and I would feel bad about it and I'd be like oh you know what's going to make me feel better masturbating so I was like addicted to just myself my own body it's not like I had to go to the off sales and buy my willy it was already <laughs> there it was already there and I just right. fucking tell it but I think the wonderful thing about being in a 12 step group is that it it teaches you how to deal with these feelings that self-will cannot defeat. So for people who are addicts, self-will and willpower is not enough because it isn't stronger than your addiction. That's why like people who are alcoholics and that, even though they might be losing their family, their pals, their health, their money, all that stuff, they're like, right, I've got no drink a day. They can't use self-will because their addiction is just that much stronger than it. That's why it's important to have a like, higher power and no like a like a god's higher power because people get all freaked out about it people are like oh I don't believe in god I believe in science fine science has a higher power fucking pray to science ask science for help but you need to have something because if you rely on yourself you're going to end up fucked and I was trying to rely on myself for years and I ended up absolutely fucked and that's why I was trying to like find anything that I could that made me feel better about myself but the only thing that's making me feel better about myself is geeing up just being like I'm no trying to influence them do I'm not trying to make people think that I'm great. I'm not trying to impress people. Obviously, we already to a certain extent, but that like desperateness that I felt, that's that gone. Co- that constant need, that constant need and want for validation. I am I alright? Am I alright? Try to get rid of that because like this podcast, man. Like whether this went good or whether this went bad, I was going to go on the bus, fucking do a bit of praying, do a bit of journaling, and have a good night. Before, if this would have went bad, it would have stayed with me for weeks. Mm-hmm. When I had a bad gig back in the day, I used to be sitting and I would feel it physically. Like, my pal's brother moved in with me and I'd always forget that he lived with me and he'd be walking by the couch and I'd be going, ah! and he'd be going, what's that? And I'm like, oh, bad gig in Aberdeen a couple of months ago, mate. Like, it was just, it was in me. Like, it stayed oh, with yeah, me. Aye. I had, because it was, I'd, because I'd failed. I'd failed so much. And that means like, you just constantly beating yourself up about it? Not even beating myself up, just suffering. Physical suffering. It's just as if I'm no good enough kind of things. I think it obviously stems back to probably your daily, maybe that's just kinda of brought that back, but that kinda of, as if it's no one well. I think so, it's, man. It's reinforced the the, the kinda of underlying feelings. I think so, man, and I think I think a lot of people struggle with that, man. A lot of people that <laughs> I don't know if I could tell this story, man, it's not my story to tell. I'm gonna tell it anyway, man. Oh, on you go, mate. I remember I remember I was I was I was, I was seeing I was seeing this lassie and she was all she was very sex positive and that and if you went through her Instagram now you'd be like oh don't fuck her she's no, no scared she's like I don't give a fuck I don't <laughs> care me. all that fantastic and she I remember her talking to her, she's like oh do you know what I just love fucking that's a horrible story man she's like oh I just love dirty talk she's like oh I just love being called a whore and a slut and <laughs> getting spat on and all this and I was like oh, Okay, okay. I mean, this was back. This was pre. This was pre sobriety days. And I was like, Hello. I like, that's just this. I she. I slapped her chin. She's like, I'm like, I'm super liking you. And I was like, I was like, yeah. uh, but I, and then we're chatting away, man. The night goes on chatting away, and um, I was talking about like I was like, 
any chance I get, I'm like, oh, my dad left when I was younger. My dad's in Abu Dhabi, you know, I can go to Abu Dhabi, I can find that. And she was like, oh, she's like, oh, I mean, my dad don't have a good relationship. She's like, I, if I, if I wear anything that isn't appropriate, he always says that I look like a whore and that I look like a slut and all this. And, and I was like, oh, and I was like, connecting I, the dots. I, and I didn't have the heart to be like, hello, does two and two equal four? Did I she not like, even realise it? She didn't know, man, she couldn't see because she had like that, she had like a mental wall in between it man it was just completely blocked and it's like I'm not going to be the guy she, she wasn't ready to get cracked man no get cracked fuck uh-huh. yeah, the, 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 the audio <laughs> listeners are like what are you fucking no, but she just wasn't it. so and I had and that I remember seeing that and being like fuck how many people are fucked up by their relationship with their parents but rather than deal with it they've built up a wee barrier and then turned into a positive like I don't give a fuck what any kind of thinks about me like equals I really care what everybody thinks about me because I really care what my mom thinks about me and my mom doesn't think that I lay me and all that stuff. The next time you meet someone that's like, oh, I'm actually really into polyamory, I actually think, like, we're not supposed to be monogamous, man. Like, you're actually supposed to just have as many partners as you possibly can. Just be like, tell me about your parents, huh? Like, and see what they say. Very rarely would they go, my parents were in a very happy and healthy relationship. Aye, is it fuck, man? Aye, aye, it's always fried, man. It's always fried. It just goes, oh, mom and dad's fuck is up. And then rather than us accept that and deal with it, we're like, oh, fucking, I'm going to go out and have a good time. But you're not having a good time, so you're just running. Man, deep nah, shit. It's going to catch up with you eventually. I caught up with me, man. Fucking leather me, man. Now, honestly, if life fell apart, man, it was the worst thing that had ever happened to me, followed immediately by the best thing that ever happened to me. Aye, um, sometimes you need your darkest moments to reveal your brightest days. I'm <laughs> sorry, fucking... Sometimes you need your da. Sometimes, aye, sometimes you need your dad. Maybe, aye, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you need your dad, man. Aye, always darkest before the dawn, man. So, aye, that's aye. it, man. Get that in a fucking quote, man. Aye, aye, when people are always like, fucking, oh, this is, this is, everything's terrible, I'm like, I hope it gets worse. I hope it's the worst that's ever been, because see, see if your life's the worst that's ever been, it's probably about to peak, mate. Ah, mate, you're up. preaching the choir, mate. I feel like, see, mm. I do that on a daily basis. You ever have a pure straight day, it usually sets me up for a belter day in the next one. Maybe yeah. it's those routine is that mm-hmm. maybe maybe it's a cut of shape days but that's how with this podcast and, that, and I think that's a very good mindset to get mm-hmm. in man because with this it's like I feel as if if I tried to do this maybe even a year ago mm-hmm. as soon as a year ago I had a problem like ah, this is not working this is hard fuck this this, uh, is, this isn't meant to be no I'm like ah, this isn't this is fucking challenging as fuck this mm-hmm. is meant to be aye, aye. know what I mean no, it's completely fucked up run know what I mean it's you ever heard of Ram Dass? Ram Dass. Ram Dass. That's a hilarious name, mate. I'm like, it's like, it's like, like Ari, to Ari, me, it sounded dead like Indian kind of yogi kind of thing, something like that. Uh, he's a, he's a, he was, a guy, he's actually a guy called Richard Alpert, but he went to India and got like renamed like Ram Dass. Whenever I mention it in my family, they're like, Ram Dass. Like, Ram Dass. I am, but he's, um, you see it in a video, Ram Dass. Ram Dass. Ram Dass. Ram Dass. Um, but essentially, like, uh, him, a guy called Timothy O'Leary, and other cunts. They were the, uh, they were the cunts that, like, they were heading, like, the psychedelic revolution in the 60s. So they were, like, at Harvard doing all these experiments with psychedelics, and they were getting, like, fucking piles of it shipped off of Sweden and that, and testing it out. They essentially, like, go LSD kicking off in the 60s. And, oh, really? Yeah, uh, yeah. And then um, Timothy O'Leary was, like, a scientist, and he went down the route of psychology and, uh, like, drugs, and he was like, right, let's see what we can learn here. And Ram Dass went to India. Is and, it, uh, Timothy O'Leary, is he one of the guys, sorry to interrupt, one of the guys that won uh, the Nobel Peace Prize? I don't think it, so, man. He got put in jail by Richard Nixon. Oh, for fuck's sake. I don't think he was on the, the good side of things. <laughs> oh, right. but maybe, but... I don't think so. I remember seeing one, it was two people and they experimented with LSD and one went on to discover like DNA chromosomes or some shit like that. I'm heavy butchering it and all <laughs> fucking shoot me the new. The four cunts that know, like, they don't got a care. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Everybody else will believe what you want. But like, I, I fucking just kept running with that man mm. shit. Edit that out so I can bullshit Edited these cunts. again. So I discovered the fucking... I uh, basically right. discovered through an acid trip he was trying to figure out see where you get your DNA unravels mm. and see what... Like, the way see if you picture the, the, the helix. The helix. Oh, the here guy we go. discovered that. Mm. Discovered that tripping on acid. He like figured it out. Did he? And Did then it? he won a Nobel Peace Prize. And then another guy, he won a Nobel Peace Prize or something. Then he started taking LSD. This is when it was before it began mm. fucking outlawed and shit. And then he quit what he was doing when into like neuroscience and shit. Aye, like, oh, man, it's fucking. That's a, that sounds pretty. Uh, maybe, man. It's a guy, yeah, uh, David Nutt, mate. Go and watch your David Nutt podcast. He's a. Uh, I <laughs> uh, know. Yeah, uh, that's what is it? That's Prince Nutt's been cracked. And they were a hilarious name, man. Oh, <laughs> hilarious name, but uh, the guy, he's like, the, the leader of like, the. What is it, the psychedelic studies at uh, the Imperial London University? Is that how you say right. it? And uh, the guy, but he was like a government advisor, man. They get the sack for saying that uh, horse riding's more dangerous than ecstasy. He's like a big pusher mm. for like, uh, like legalising drugs for mm. like fucking uh, studies and shit mm. like that, man. But he's big in that. He goes right into the history of why uh, LSD was outlawed because basically the uh, the CIA were, were worried people, like people, the young 
people in America would be taking it and know what to go to fight in Vietnam. So they created this big fucking smear campaign, you know what I mean? That makes sense, man. That makes a lot of sense. Aye, that's what they put uh, Tim Leary in jail and uh, his story is that two the polis came up and they were... It was, like, it was like a Simpsons burp, man. <laughs> uh, the polis came up to him and they were like, oh, we need to arrest you for these joints. And he was like, what joints? And then the polis pulled out like two joints and they were like, that. And they put him in jail and they put him in like solitary confinement and all that. And they just tried to... I uh, just uh, fucking uh, mind it was, him. It was Nixon. Richard Nixon called Tim O'Leary the most dangerous man in America because he was, he, was, he was saying like, uh, it was like, oh, I'm going to fuck him. He's only, it's only like six words, but I can't get him. But it was like, tune in, drop out, turn up that wasn't what it was it wasn't a turn up but it was along the lines and Richard Nixon was like drop out drop out so cunts were like dropping out of college and all this and they were like this isn't good so they tried to like anyway it was aye, fine it man- nice to come- aye, but he made it through man and he managed to come out and live an old fucking happy life uh, documentary on Netflix can't remember what it's called but uh, type in Ramda Ramda Ramda's Tim O'Leary's documentary tells you all about them man and uh, it tells you even about like the guy who discovered acid and that on the bike ride and stuff really uh, good documentary yeah, yeah Albert Hoffman aye uh, just, it takes you through all that stuff where did we get to on this you were Ramdas. talking about Ramdas, we started talking about well, it and um, interrupted you. I know, it's good stuff, man. I fucking love it. I never get a chance to talk about this because cunts are always like. Uh, I right, let's hear that. I'm interested. You've right. got my attention. That, First um, thing I had my interest, now you've got my attention. So they, they two were, they were into the psychedelics, man, and just kept going and going and <coughs> seeing as far as they could get. Tim O'Leary went down the science route and Ramdas went to India and started going down the spiritual route. He ended up getting like a guru and all that and he started to, and then he came back and he went around and he gave all these lectures. And a lot of his lectures are on audiobooks, you can get them on Audible. And he's been the most influential force in my life. The first time I ever heard him was I was, I was on a plane on the way to Abu Dhabi to meet my family that I'd never met before. And when I found out he died, I was on a plane back from Abu Dhabi earlier last year. And I was like, oh, what a weird fucking... What the fuck? What, what a weird parallel, man. Aye, absolutely. Um, but I, see, I, like, I listen to a lot of his books and he's a comedian, mate. That's what I love about him is when he's doing his lectures, he's funny. And you, know, right. and you know it's jokes because you listen to different lectures for different uh, like periods and some of the same jokes are in there. And I'm like, oh. But also there's like hundreds of information just about all this shit he's learned. And he's like, like, he's like 50, 60 when he's doing these lectures. So he's like, I don't give a fuck. He's like, if you, he's like, if you, he's like, if you, you can hear what I say, you can no believe it, you can no, you can like it, you can love it. He's like, that's not it. My job is to tell you. I love that. I'd much rather do that than comedy. I fucking hate having to be funny. I don't mind being funny. I love being funny, but see, having to be funny. Don't want. I constantly having to like every time they start talking. There's always that right end end be go funny. end joke. Be funny. It always has to end funny. Aye, I prefer that's where we can have like a conversation about something and then come in and the jokes. Ah, you've and got the kind of freedom to do. You know mm. what I mean? You've kind of get free will there. Mm. But anyway, man, Ram Das, he is saying like one of his big things. They go to the end is like there needs to be grace and suffering. He's like, you are gonna suffer, one hundred percent. You're gonna suffer. He's like, can you get to the point where you love suffering? Can, when the worst things that are happening in your life happening, can you be thankful for them? No, in hindsight, like you were saying, like when you look back and go, oh, thankful for that. But as it's happening, can you be like, oh, thank God this is happening. Thank fuck this awful shit is happening to me. Oh, fucking half my family just got killed in a volcano. Oh, th- th- oh this is interesting. Oh, now I get to see myself. Oh, I'm all sad. Oh, all oh, oh, that. And be like a watcher of everything that's going on. And he's like, when you get to that stage, everything's all right. Because no matter what happens to you, you're just looking at yourself responding to it. You're witnessing everything instead of being caught up in it and like stuck in the mud and like, oh, this is good and this is bad and this is good and this is bad. You can just take a step back from it and be like, this is happening. That's fine. And then something else will happen and it'll just keep going like that. He talks about a lot about like, if, like just the fact that suffering is an inevitability. You can't fight it off. You're going to suffer and then you're going to die. All is up. There's nothing to do with it. That's a guarantee of life. Aye. If you can not only accept that it's going to happen, but be thankful for the fact that it's going to happen, it's going to make everything a bit easier. And I find that, man, when I've been in suffering, there's a wee bit of me that's like, this is already quite a good story. Like, this is already quite a good story to Aye. tell. I don't know what the next bit is, but this bit is fucking Aye, great. I suppose it's rather than waiting waiting until you've kind of dealt with it to get that closure side there, or maybe not even get that, but just mm-hmm. further down the line like that, right, I can maybe, uh, I can, can kind of drop that kind of, I don't know, the hurt in it, mm-hmm. maybe drop that and can I see, oh, maybe I did fucking, and can I try and reason with yourself, but I see what you're talking about, mm-hmm. maybe rather than having to go through that period of having to come to terms with it, mm-hmm. you're avoiding all that, but it's almost like training the brain to a degree, in it? I think so, so man. Like, if you're looking to go through like, the hardest of suffering, then be like, ah, no, I'm thankful, like, you know what I mean, well, this is going to, at some point, mm-hmm. I'm going to look back, no, maybe look back and be like, ah, oh, fucking glad it happened, but maybe at some point it's going to, 
no pay off, but no, I mean, I'm going to be Completely. rewarded to a degree. I guess it's. Um, if I might be fucking. No, I no, I think you're absolutely right, man. I think you're absolutely right, and I think it's like accepting the the mystery. So while it's happening, you're like, this is going to be good somehow, but I don't know right now. It's but the know it feels bad, but I know it's going to be good. People are like, how how is it going to be good? You're like, I don't know right now. There's a bit of mystery there, but come back to me in a year and I'll tell you exactly. Something how. good's got to come in us, so it's a lot of man's just sort of been able to realise in the moment, right? No matter how fucking bad this is, there's mm-hmm. something good's got to come in us. Mm-hmm. That's and it's saying it's be able to tell yourself that right rather than focus on how bad it is right now it's like right it might be bad right now but that's setting me up for something great aye aye it's just like it's bad okay I think that's why spiritual cunts annoy people when they're like oh you've just lost both your legs mate and they're like oh that is God's will you're like how's it God's will if you lose your legs mate you'll maybe be a basketball player because just love logic all the time man aye. but the spiritual people are like oh well, it's God's will and all that because they've got that faith they don't have the answers they don't have the plan they don't have the info but they've got the faith I think we're like and I, I'm somebody who came for being like completely faithless and just being like fucking science and all that. I mean, people just say the word science. They don't know what they mean by it. They just say science, mate. Aye, science. And I was the same. I'd be like fucking religion, mate. Aye, try science. They're like which, which science? What, what about science? Just fucking science, mate. Just fucking science. Huh? That was me for years, and now I'm at the point where I'm like, nah, faith. And I've got a lot more. Um, life's been a lot easier for I became faithful than it was when I was trying to be quote-unquote scientific because unless you're an actual scientist you're just talking shit aren't you I know you're just you're, you're just, just repeating re- things repeating what you think you know but yeah. it was weird there's a mad fact to find out see the big bang theory it was actually got like, uh, coined by a priest in the vatican his name is george lemitri was it i was the first guy to like coin it obviously i don't know what stephen Hawking might have incorporated the phrase he might i don't know if i'm a bit put a bit more science to it but mm-hmm. that's what it originally who we originally created that's it so that is a weird thing you know what i mean you're like all mm-hmm. oh, right we'll go back to like a lot of people say oh we'll start a the start of creation was the big bang theory, and mm. I'm like, oh, oh, and that does my, fucking blow it. And that does my tits in, man, because it's like, the big bang. And I'm like, the explosion that began everything. Aye. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Where was this explosion? How did that... It's just a big bang. Oh, it was a big bang. Oh, right. Oh, thank you for that, mate. That really clarifies it. <laughs> that was a big it. bang right here. You're going to have that bit up. Perfect, mate. That, 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 I believe in that as much as I do when cunts go, ah, the big bang, mate. That happened in a studio in the bar, as by the way, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you want any fucking proof. There's a whole mini microverse just kicking off in there, man. Just <laughs> a wee fucking too many versions of yours. See, this podcast gets sound effects and everything. Where do you want? <laughs> I mean, we're gone places. Well, I've done enough banging in my time, man. Fucking, <laughs> I wanted the religion side of it. I, I agree with you, mate. I was honestly, I was like, see, like you talked about before, you were the most faithless person ever. I was, I know, I was the most negative. Oh, like, <laughs> it, honest to God, every situation, I had to be the one that, like, oh, why this happened to aye, me? Aye, I aye. was always, no, I mean, and I, I sucked some solace in that. I, I, I suck. I, I, I sucked <laughs> some solace in that. I was like, I, I fuck, oh, it's always happened to me. Poor me. This and that. The world owes me a living. It was fucking bullshit, no, I mean, I was always. Then just pure negative man mm. then I was always why is this shit happened to me mm-hmm. then now as I got older it was actually a DMT experience that kind of oh you'll like, never get a DMT oh DMT's. fuck I mean I've spoken about this I've probably fucking born cunts ah you're like big Joe man like, sum be- up to me in a sentence well this is your challenge basically fucking first time I was always full of self doubt all my life and obviously just never believed myself or nothing first time I took DMT and I came away with a message that doubt is the devil mm. and it was a strange phrase to take it was like doubt is the devil I've had a few phrases whispered in my ear I, it's never I've never read it and nobody's ever said it well I ended up got to see my pal in Levendale mm. like, about a month after that mm. and he was he was talking about God he was talking about the devil and all that kind of stuff he was going he was like people are so full of self doubt he's like doubt is the devil he said that and to I'm you? like what the fuck and Whoa. I was like right, maybe there's something to this but see the first time it was like that's, I'd never believed in uh, spirituality. wasn't even a hanging thought. I see if somebody said spirituality, I just thought it was some kind of uh, fucking hippie shit or uh, something. Beads and that, uh, some incense. I just that. thought no, it was like a, incense, I just thought it was like a fashion mm-hmm. almost. Uh, like, I didn't believe it was any, spiritual, man. any depth to it. No, I mean I just thought it was oh, I'm a spiritual guy or a, like a fucking I don't know I'm a hippie or Aye. something. It was an identity. I didn't think it was much to it. Then mm-hmm. that was the thought. Fucking, I was like, ah, wait a fucking minute, man. There's more to this, man. It felt like ah, I was just like. First time I was like, it was like it was like a spiritual awakening. That's what people call it. And then I was mm. like, and I looked into DMT and that, and I was like, and you look at the history. I thought it was like a kind of recent thing, but you look. Well, did you get all the DMT? I'll talk to you about that after the podcast. No, 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 like no, I mean like the area, like where did like where did that happen? Where? What do you mean? Where did you take it? In my pal's house, and he's living them. Right, cool. But where's that? Dremoyne. Dremoyne. Like 
what, what are the chances that you would have ever thought that you would have a spiritual awakening in Dremoyne? Aye. Like, in a living room in Dremoyne, your whole life changed well, there and then. See, that's the thing, but see, I was talking about obviously you're meant to be good in a certain path. A few times before, like, a couple of my pals were taking DMT and I, I always shout out it. Mm -hmm. And it was just one day I was like, ah, no, what? Fuck it. <laughs> I was like, ah, I don't care if I take this and it fucking fries me. I don't mm -hmm. care. I'm at a point now. I was just like, what is it? Why are we here? What is the meaning of life? It was one of the mad kind of yeah. fucking uh, hang me's in life. It was just, so I, know what, I was crisis. like, fuck it. You know what I mean? And I went and that's so why I was like, right, fuck it. And I just went into it. And I think that's the mindset you kind of need to be in to go into it. You know what I mean? You can't force it. People find it in the same time. Mm -hmm. And when I took it, man, and it's like, I've took it a, a handful of times, man. And every time, I put this into right, where I'm sitting here right now. I wouldn't be doing this now if it wasn't for me smoking DMT that first time. I feel like that. I died the first time I took acids, and that was a fundamental life experience for me that made me. Um, people with ADHD are already comfortable with death in a weird way. Um, like my my granddad died a few days ago, man. On my Arab side. Oh and fuck! Sorry, he I, me. No, it's alright, man. It's but, but the weird thing hasn't been like um the weird thing has been how quickly and accepting I've been of that, and that's it's, it's an ADHD thing. It's very common that people with ADHD deal with death differently. Um, but that's weird. I feel like I, I should be like, but as soon as I heard it, I was like, uh, okay, cool. And that's that's a weird thing in itself. But the first time I ever took acid, I had a real kind of death experience, as in like there was 0% doubt in my head that I was going to die. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm at my nut, I'm on drugs. It was like, a, I think I've told this on all podcasts, man, but I was like, the, I took it and I fainted. I think because I'd had a couple of, I'd, I'd had a bit of a drink before it and that, and I went out to, uh, hold on, where to start in this story? Mm. Start it for the start, you know? For the start? Whatever, whatever it makes it, I go for it. I feel like I might let you finish up in your DMT though before I come Oh, that out. was pretty much it, basically. But when mm. It goes back, that's another thing and all. It was weird, it was like fucking, uh, uh, you're talking about the death thing, sorry to fucking hijack your story, but oh, that was another thing, man, I felt as if I died in right of heaven. Didn't mm. think I was dead. I just felt as if I was stripped, I see worry, doubt, or I was gone. I just, as if some kind of just fucking fucked a bucket of water, it was, it was a wean, I was mm. like, it was mental freedom. Filled with light. And another thing, I was just getting death, like I always thought, like fucking, thing, where do we go after we die? Then I just to go in my head that death is the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it's like, once you, you die, it's like you're fucking, I sound a bit fucking preachy, but like you're, your soul's eternal, you know what I mean? It's like light, death is infinite, Aye, whereas no. life is temporary. And that's what kind of taught me, I was like, ah, right, we're only here, we've got one life, right? Mm. Whatever happens when you die, that's fucking forever. But right now, we've only got this wee short period of time. We're not going to get this again. Mm -hmm. So you may as well do as much as you can because mm -hmm. the time you die, you're not, you can't come back here. Nah. I mean, you're not coming, you're, if, if you get reincarnated, that's another story. But you're not coming, I'm not coming back. I'm not dying and coming back as no, me. Big 50 is on a countdown. That's it, mate. Know what I mean? So that's what I realised of what like, happened. There's nothing to like, fucking worry about in death. Death is going to happen when it happens. Mm -hmm. So right now, you've just you've got this moment. And it's the present. Mm. It's called the present because it's a gift. Uh, fucking hell, put man! Get us. I'm gonna fucking make a fucking take Facebook quote page. Uh, with me, you on one side with like, that's like, it, man. Aye, but good. that's it, and that's where I kind of mm. so it kind of gave me a pure lease for life. But mm. I tell us about your acid. Very but, similar story, man. A very, very, very similar story. And the, the, the so, so I was at my pals, and I don't know what, how I managed to get I, I, in my head, but I was like, I'm gonna take acid today, and I never took it before. I never even took mushrooms or any psychedelic. I was like, I keep looking at you, man, and then I don't look at you for about twenty minutes, and you zone out, and then I look at you again, and you're See, like, the GoPro's right there, so it will actually be quite. I, just, as if keep, I'm keep, to the I just audience. wish I was doing it consistently. I can either keep looking at you or no look at you, but I keep fucking teasing you, man. Where we look, and then when you zone out, I'm like, you looking, man? Too boring. You're not this morning, mate. So I'm fucking, I'm zoning in. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, a perfect kind of listen. The first guest is actually spoke to the two he's usually not. I was usually just kind of told to me, I think kids forget he's there, not I mean, well, I forget he's there or not. Kind of do it, man. I've known what that like showbiz in, mate. Because uh, like, you're, you're like, that used to fucking get your, like, see, didn't keep your stand up, that you're used to getting hitting the room, man. Aye, hitting the room, you're used aye. to connecting. Aye. I always did find, find it so funny, man. I'm so wee, but when I was on stage, he's doing stand up, man. Like, Larger than life. Uh, people would come up to me and go, I can't believe you are this height, and I'm like, I oh, fucking bet you can't make some up, and I'm like, <laughs> 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 to be honest, I thought you'd shrank, see, when I was in the corner. I don't get my glasses. John, but I was like, fuck, I fucking thought he was tall. I, I, mean, I remember he'd been tall. Mate, I'm probably one of the smallest people that most people know. Like, <laughs> that, like when you get midgets, dwarfs, and then me. Like, that's literally it. Like, there's no much in between us all. Anyway, I'll get, I'm taking this acid. <laughs> a right? tall midget or a fucking very short. Uh, Fucking, I was going to say normal person there, but I had to get fucking cancelled there. I can't be saying that shit. I always love the idea of me being just pure fucking, like, horrible. Yeah, a tall midget or a small tall person? Like, being in, like, a midget wrestling company, but being the giant. And being like, 
Rah. What the super midget? I, I keep having dreams of that I'm in wrestling school, man, and it's getting to the point that it's so consistent that I'm like, oh, I remember like my last fucking lesson in that in my dreams, oh, man. Sweet. I don't want to be a wrestler. I tried, man. I tried. I went to wrestling school, and I was like, this just isn't that for me. Is it more for you now? No, do you know what it is, man? It's like, oh, do you know how when you're doing comedy, and I'm like, I did that for free for a long time to like go. I'm got. I'm driving to Aberdeen. It's going to cost me sixty quid in petrol. I'm going to get ten minutes, and it's going to. No, look, I give me money for it. But I'm gonna get my ten minutes. You need to suffer for it. Right. With that, with wrestling, it's the same. You need to go to Sheffield, smash your head off the ground for ten pound. And mm. I'm like, I just don't think I'm. I yeah. don't think I'm there. But I, I love the world, man. I've always loved wrestling more than I've ever loved anything else. It's like a salve, man. See, when I fucking went through my breakdown, the two things that I found was an album for when I was like ten, like Fort Minor's first album, man. Remember my name, great song. And wrestling, man. I just put wrestling on and I was comfortable. And I'm like, I fucking I love this, man. But I went to wrestling school with Davey. I went to fucking... Mm-hmm. And I seen it, you see it in Davey, man, when he was wrestling. And that was his... Uh, his that's fucking, his thing. I, it, it, was ju- it wasn't even that it was like good at it or bad at it. It was like that. David belonged in that ring throwing himself about. And I remember just being like, I don't have that. Mm, I don't have that. that. Fire. I, the fire wasn't there for me, but I want to be in that world. Never thought about though. being a wrestling commentator. All the time. That would be your perf- <laughs> you're the perfect guy for it. You love wrestling. You don't want to be the wrestler, but you're the great talker. And you, I'm sure you'd be a fucking great commentator. Oh, well, man. See, now, wait, the, the, this is the tricky thing now, right? See, at this point in my life, I can't have any plans. I've made a commitment mm. to not having plans, but seeing something like that happens, my boss tingle, mate. My boss are like, oh, you can be on a record. Mm-hmm. I think I'd be good. Because I could, mate, I could get in, if I, was, if, I was in, if I was in wrestling, man, and I'd just, in wrestling, you know what I mean? I'm a fucking muck, mate. This is why. This is why I can't be in the business, man, because I'm not ready to work at it yet. I'm too much of a fan. Yeah, but like, we ever see somebody that's like, oh, like, uh, football. Or like, oh, I'd fucking love to be, a, I'd love to play for Celtic, man. You're like, you cream yourself, or Celtic. You will <laughs> never make it to Celtic. You fucking, you love it too much. So I feel like I'm with wrestling, man. Like you could, I could meet. I was gonna say the Rock, but he's a wrestler, man. So that doesn't make sense. I could meet Bruce Willis and say, "How you doing, Bruce, man? Can I get you a cup of coffee? You're right. Fine. If I met a cunt for fucking, I don't know, Edinburgh." Ed- Edinburgh Pro Wrestling EPW right? I just made it up if I met if I met the, the heavyweight champion of EPW I'd be like oh, have you got the belt like, oh, got the belt that kills me man I don't want to be like that I want to be able to be able to go I want to work at this and I think that's why it's in my dreams do you know what I mean so it's like that Try uh, to find that it's a recurring was. dream mate it's Ah, I see that as a sign, man. It's, but been, it's, it's been a recurring dream my whole life man uh, ah yeah it's, it's got to be something to that but as, as you're saying you're not a bit of uh, maybe even like commentating side or even like a wee kind of see role in it like maybe like your do you compare it like I don't know you get some roles like fucking like maybe they can't just stand with the mics backstage when you're big tall cunts ah, stand yeah. like that how big will they look they will look fucking you'd be a perfect guy in the giant. camera be a perfect talker ah. for it get out and just uh, wind cunts up and then get an announcer oh mate get a big get, an announcer get two big fat cunts and manage them right <laughs> and then anytime MD comes at me they get battered by the two big ah, fat cunts ah that's it but I'm sitting there like fuck it. oh Glasgow you all fucking suck girl. ah you're like, like, winding yeah, up I'm not even from here man from Abu Dhabi <laughs> 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 see you fucking Vote, I don't know what I mean. Mate, I think about it constantly, mate. Every 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 ten minutes, mate. But <laughs> work it out, mate. Work it out. But no, yet, man. No plans. No plans. So I'm taking this acid, right? I'm right. at my pal's house, and I'm like, I'm gonna get it. I text a guy I go to college with, and I'm like, you go acid, and he's like, yes, I have three. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna come for a Coddle, like Mary Hill mm. to the gobbles. I'm like, right, so I had to get a bus out there, and I walked into this house. Not a good house, man. The only thing I remember is this: uh, there was a, a lass in there with huge hoop earrings. They were massive, but it was just a bit of weird. Bigger the hoop, the bigger the hole. I, 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 and her eyes were also massive, and they were like, like this, man. Everybody was just a bit spacey, and they come in, and they were like, oh, you're going to just give me a bit of tin foil. Like, That'll be fifteen pound. <laughs> Expensive, but I tell you, I've bought my life. I was cracking jokes in that, and everybody was just like. <laughs> like the, la- the lassie specifically was like uh, like owner like it was a bit the, like fag fags was on the flare in that one of their places she was on this mattress in the living room like legs off like that and every time I cracked a joke she was just looking at me like why is he here like, why? and I was cracking jokes at her to try to bring her on board I was like oh, look at that and she was like just looking at a wall like no no look at me just look at wall. anyway can I get to the strikes man because this is a long story right so so I'm taking this I've never took acid before but I've googled it and I know it's going to take a note to hit me so I'm waiting on the bus I take it 20 minutes in it hits me don't know what's happening there it never happened before or since maybe because I was pissed but I was standing and the bus started going whoop 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 as it was coming towards me and I was like this is not ideal 
get on the bus and I'm sitting, I'm tripping, and I've never tripped before. I've never been in any sort of tripping condition before. And so this is your first time. This is my it? first time taking any psychedelic. If, and if you, if, for people who don't take psychedelics, imagine being high times like a thousand. So like the, the nice, comfortable numbness you get when you're stoned. Imagine that taking you out, and you're like, oh, fuck, I'm on the bus and I'm right. Jellyfish man. Oh god, I write on my phone and I'm like, I remember. I, like, I'm on the bus, I'm really scared that there's girls at the back laughing at me, and I'm like, there's only two things I know. Number one, I'm on the bus. Number two, oh my god, I forgot what number two is, <laughs> so that starts freaking me out, man. I'm so your first time taking acid was on a bus? Oh, I, was, I thought it would take a new, by the time I got back, I thought it would kick in, but the first time I was tripping was on a bus. Couldn't handle it, man. I walked out I can't, and across the, the aisle for me, and I was like, listen, mate, I, my, my name's Terry, I'm, in, and, and I'm on acid, and I've never took it before, and he's like, oh, well, don't worry, pal, my name's John, and I'm a, I'm a care worker. So you're gonna be all right. I was like, oh, okay, John, okay, John. <laughs> John's telling me I'm gonna be all right. Oh, John's like, oh, John's like, you couldn't tell and all that. And I'm like, oh, cheers, John. And anyway, I got off the bus. I got off a stop early, and I don't know where I'm because obviously, like, sense of direction. Fuck. I get, I shout these wee boys. I'm like, little boys, like, guide me to my friend's house. And I'm like, oh, up here, and all that. I was like, I could have been in jail immediately, man. Just sitting, tripping, <laughs> talking to little kids. I know, I know, even like teen boys, like Wayne's with like schools. And I was like, can you help me get to my pal's house? And they did. They were very kind. And I'll shout out the wee boys. I get so I get in my pal's house and then this is like it's honestly like a drug trip like a drug trip scene in a movie and uh, I black out but I just remember like faces and voices gone by me going like, blah, 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 blah. I'm away for three years man and the next thing I remember is me waiting on top of a Buddha I'm like <laughs> waiting on a Buddha so he's like Bleh! and I'm like fucking hell man that sounds fucking um, prof- pro- uh, what's it called Oh, fuck prophetic. Yeah, uh, prophetic. Oh. I was trying to say it without saying pathetic. <laughs> I, was, I, 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 got, I, I can go one or two ways. No, I mean, I can be like, ah, right, prophetic, prophetic, prophetic. That sounds pathetic. No, I'm, I mean. like, I'm all day, I'm like, I don't know what I said. Uh, but, um, but that was me coming back, and there's videos, in, there's vid- they're showing me videos of me, like, waiting on myself in the shower and getting washed and all this. And, fuck, and I'm like, well, was all, I've got no recollection of any of this. So I'm in the kitchen, and what really freaks me out is that my pals, like, so when I left, it was just me and my pals in the house. And when I come back, she's like, oh, this is my wee cousin. But the wee cousin wasn't there when I left. So suddenly there's just this new person in the house. And I'm like, I've never even heard of this wee cousin. Like, what's going on? still at this point? Aye, still absolutely. Aye, that's it. Freaks you out, man. When Aye. You, you need, like, when you introduce a remove company, Aye, it I, needs to stay the same all the way. not good. I've never even heard the or mentioned before. And she was obviously like, are you on drugs? And I was like, oh, my God. Like, what is happening here? I'm standing in the kitchen. And then somebody says something. I start laughing. I go, ah, ha, ha. And I hit the ground, like I faint, I pass out, <laughs> and I actually wake up, like being like, oh my god, and I say to my pal, I'm like, I think I just, I think I just, I think, and I pass out again, hit the flare, and I wake up and I'm on the flare again, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. Okay, that's me, I'm gonna die. Right, because I passed out while I'm tripping, I'm like, death is coming for me. They sat me on the couch, they phoned me an ambulance, the ambulance come out, they fucking do my arm and all that, I'm like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. But like, you're not gonna die, you've just took psychedelics. And they leave, and I'm like, they don't fucking know, like, they're gonna feel so bad when I die, like, away, man. And um, I'm sitting on my pal's How couch. How many hours were in, in the trip now, do you know? We are talking, it's night time when the ambulance come, the ambulance comes at like eight, eight nine o'clock, and I take the acid at like three. So we're about five hours in. Fuck's sake, man. Usually by that point you're kind of winding down, man. Well, it's your first time and all that. Well, we're missing the two, three years where I was just completely black out. So I don't know what I was like during that. I don't know what happened there. But when I came back, this was still my first experience tripping. So the first the first ever peak that I experienced, I wasn't there for. So everything coming down for the peak was essentially my first yeah. trip. So all the, all the kind of wind down stage was my first... Uh, and I'm like, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. I take a video from my mum and my wee brother being like, <laughs> so sorry I've left you without a son. I didn't want to die taking drugs in Mary Hill. Like, my pals are a bit like, ha ha. But also a bit like, is he all right? Like, because I'm like, I'm properly greeting. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, this is it. Like, I've loved you and that. Like, I'm so sorry. I lie on the couch and they put the blanket on me and I lie there for four hours waiting for death. Oh, no, yeah, like, think they might die or what are you thinking about? Like, being like, I am ready to die now, right? And obviously I'm under the covers, so I'm sweating, so my ear fills up with sweat, but in my head I'm like, that's my brain burst. That is my brain, that's my brain burst, that's your brain burst, and I'm bleeding out my ears, and then I was like, right, so I'm gonna die, and I, I made proper peace with it, and I'm trying to like hold my breath to get me to die quicker, because I was like, I'm gonna die at some point, I'm like, I'm, si- I'm, like, I'm sick of waiting, so I was like, <gasps> Ah, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it. Like, obviously still just tripping, there's no threat of death, but for the four hours, I sat and I waited on it, man, and I really, really came to peace with eyes. And the next day when I woke up, I was like, oh, I'm alive. Oh, I can't be alive. 
oh, I'm going to throw myself off a bridge. Like, still absolutely away. I went outside and I'm like, right, I need to go kill myself. And I was like, hold on, fucking 999, hello, can I get an ambulance? I've had a stroke. They were like, what? I was like, I've had a stroke. What had happened was I'd been lying on my left bicep, so I had like a wee, like, dent in it. And the bar's like, oh, that's, I've died. Like, I've had a stroke. And they're like, does it sound like you've had a stroke? And I'm like, no, I have. So another ambulance comes out. I found out later it costs like £400 every time an ambulance is called. So Fuck sorry to the man. NHS, man. I cost them nearly a grand I that night. I you were threatened. Aye, and they took me to the hospital and that. And I just sat in the hospital just like, Cadillac, I made it. Cadillac, I made it. And then when I sobered up, I was like, Pfft. and ever since then, man, I've not had any fear of death at all because, no. because I've already died. I've already, like, and no nah. even, and no even like, oh, you were just doing drugs. Nah, to my mind, to my physiology, to my neurology, mm -hmm. Death came. You genuinely I, accepted it in your, in your mind? 100% you know I mean? accepted it, man. And that was the first time I ever saw that I said it. And that was one of the most fundamental experiences in my entire life. And I credit that way of being like a kind of foundation that I've built everything else on top of. And I wouldn't have had that without psychedelics. Oh, you won't get that in a fucking joint anyway. Not, I mean. Not at all, man. Not at all. Sitting on the couch going, mate, have a wank. Mate, have a wank, mate, for a dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> mate, wank my dominoes and eat it. Mix it up, man. <laughs> mate, I tell you, mate, I am not wanked in 40 days, mate. 40 is, days. Is that part of the recovery it's you can't wank? Part of it, man. Part of it, man. The boys must be like, what, man? Does it know they... The body adapts to it, man. I suppose it does, doesn't it, man? It, it adapts does. to fucking And the cold water's made a massive difference. Because you know when you're in the cold water and you're like, I need to go, I need to go, I need to go. And you're like, no, you will fucking stay. Nah. The first couple of weeks, my brain's like, you need to wank. And I'm like, no, no, no. And I've known, man, it's been, it's been great, mate. It showed me that, like, there's, na there's nothing that happens that I can't control by phoning people and talking to them about it. So whatever's coming up, like, whatever feeling I've got coming up, I'm like, oh my fuck God, I'm going, I need to fucking, I need to watch porn, then I need to fucking sign up to an OnlyFans, or any of this stuff, man. I'm like, I phone somebody and I'm like, this is what I'm feeling. And as soon as you say it out loud, they're like, well, that's all right. You're like, oh fuck, that is all right. And it's ridiculous. I fuck that, man. I'm not going on Brazzles. Fuck them. Done. <laughs> and then, and then, but that's transferred to everything. So if ever I've got any fears or worries and anxieties, I can phone somebody, talk to them about it, and it takes it away. So that means there's nothing that I can, the only thing that can get me is isolation. If I start cutting myself off with people, it'll just be me versus my impulses, no. and the impulses will always win. But as soon as you start branching out and try to get the help of other people by being honest and authentic, and don't try to be manipulative, I think a lot of times when we're taught to ask other people for help, it's like, I'm just not, I'm not doing well. I need my friends around me right now. <laughs> That's not the one, man. That uh, is like... It's a bit, it's a bit of guilt in people. It's like as if they feel they need to be there kind of thing. You're trying to like tweak them into looking after you. Kind of be that. It needs to be like, I'm feeling a bit rough. Are you all right with help me? Can you please help me? And it's done. It's been great, man. It's, abs it's changed my life completely, man. It's changed who I am completely. So things like, I've not been out with my pals since this fucking reincarnation or whatever it is, man. And all the basically, the whole way that I interacted with the world has melted away. Cause I'm not trying to shag people anymore, mm -hmm. and you didn't understand that that was all I was doing. <laughs> even if I was doing, other, even when I was doing comedy, I was like right, deep in my heart, I was like, I hope somebody but shags me. I'll get the birds who love this. Absolutely, love this. absolutely. Everything was just all about sex because I didn't feel good enough, man. But through going through this twelve step stuff and having chats with other sober cunts, I feel good enough. So I'm excited to see how I interact with the world. I'm buzzing to see what I'm like. What am I like on a night out when I'm no a fucking bar in security hoping that I, I look good enough in Kokomo to take somebody home? Do you know what? Do you know what? I, I, only, I only took somebody home for the club one time in my entire life. But every time I went, and we are talking like hundreds of times over the years, I was like, tonight could be the night. Tonight could be the night. That hope never left me. That's how desperate I was, man. Even though, like, 99 times it hadn't happened, every time I was like, might be the night. Fold the bed sheets back, light a candle and that. I lived with my gran for three years. <laughs> How was I going to take him back to fucking East School Bride, man? But in my heart, I was like, somebody will shag me. <laughs> done. It's all done, man. All I do is actually have authentic connection with people, have experiences like this. I'm not trying to pump either one of these. No, it seems like the lovely boys. No, absolutely. But I'm not coming on this podcast to get my hole. I'm coming on this podcast. <laughs> Bastard, <laughs> man. That fuck's a fucking half end. I had these cameras are not even out. on. <laughs> <laughs> He's just getting the torch on. <laughs> I know, there's gonna get a guy come here and pick you up the fake taxi and fucking damn it. Can't you cancel him, Matt? Fuck. <laughs> I can't see it. <sighs> but uh, that's the thing with the cold water therapy, I realised that as well, man. See, there is something about she sitting in cold water. Every time I thought you feel it yourself, mm. there is never a day I'm like, ah, yes! Not once. Can I wait again? I'm Not always once. like, ah, fucking, this if I wake up, fucking need to jump that cold bath. And every time I force myself to do it, and when I'm in it, it's like after the first 30 seconds, you get accustomed to it. But there's something about, see, Force yourself to sit because it's no pleasant. You don't, 
you feel the benefits after you jump out it, mm-hmm. you dry dive, it's mm-hmm. not usually you're in it. Maybe sometime when you jump in it, you're like, ah, yes, so you have to have used to it, but there's something about that, man, it kind of installs like a discipline. discipline. And you're, and I'm like, Physical right, discipline. If I can force myself to do something that's physically uncomfortable, every day I'm not wanting to do it, mm-hmm. but I still do it, then I'm translating that into other, like, when I'm going out running, I'm like, ah, I'm running up the hill, and I'm like, ah, usually before, I used to go running, I'd run for a bit, stop, run, stop. To this day, I've, Fucking since I've been doing this whim off, be even watching David Goggins. I've been out of run, I've got the mentality, I'll only stop if I collapse. Are you a regular runner, man? Once a week. Oh, I'm going to go piss, man, but when I come back, I want you to tell me. Ah. I've, seen, I've seen Goggins, I've seen his knees on Joe Rogan, oh, man. His knees are oh, fucked, didn't he? His fucking toes are fucked, eh? He was only Undertaker, Joe Rogan and Undertaker were watching one of his videos and they syringed his knee open. Aye, ah, yeah, probably not. He was out running the next day, man. He's ah, like, he's he a fucking. Oh, fuck, I got my knees you seen the cunt's toes, man? His fucking toes are half like. Yeah, uh, to- No, his toes, his toenails. Uh, I do. Um, his toenails? No, I'm gonna Google that, but. No, he's like, I cut his toenails. He's like, he took a photo of his toenails, man. He's like, do you look at the state of these, man? And then he's. I don't know what fuck off of him if he's half. Running, mate, I do once a week now, but I'm fucking, I just do. Uh, once a week's enough for me, and I look forward to it, man. See, so getting up in the morning, man, and just going around, and it's like putting the headphones on and just I, I don't plan ever really plan my routes I just go out and I'll just run and uh, I never do the same run two weeks in a row mm. when they see the same route I'll always change it see mm. if I do the same route two weeks in a row or like that fuck this it's, uh, it'll just once on a, a week once a week I could day once a week nah. 52 runs a year aye ah, 52 runs a year because I usually run I'll go because I try to do twice a week and then it was like see by the time it got to like the, the runs during the week I'd be like that still feel a bit fuck no really recovered like ah, fuck is that it's as if I only if it was only a couple of days, then like, I fucking need to run again, whereas the week, it's long enough, as well as I can look forward to it now. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, right, yes, I've got my run at the weekend, mm-hmm. and then it's like one of those, I've got a full week to be like, ah, right, I'm fucked. Because I go, I run like 20 k's and shit like mm-hmm. that, you know what I mean? I just, I, and since then, the most I've ever done, before the Wim Hof breathing was a 14k, and that was a fucking slog, that was, I had to like, get in David Goggins mentality, I had to push myself. <laughs> Started doing the Wim Hof breathing, mm. cut a week, and the next round of the rest of that was a 27k. Nearly doubled it. Whoa! It's like having an extra long mate, see, doing it. But it's, eh, uh, ah, it's really good. I love running, man. I fucking, I do it. I just, it's funny, man. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy, I think, and all. I used to fucking hate running. I fucking hate running. That's saying that. I used to, when I used to do the boxing, I used to get up and go runs, but it was never. Mm. The Jogs right. in the block with the hoodie on and that. Aye, just jump and up, run before school and shit like that, and aye. it was like fucking, but it wasn't it. And I was running and blowing at my arse and running and stopping, but no, it's just like that, nah. I'll not let, I'll only stop running if I collapse. Mm. Do you know how I know I need to go running? Because every time somebody gives me a reason not to run, I'm like, yes, yes. My granda was like, running's no good for you. And I was like, yeah, what the fuck? Oh, there you go. My granda said it, so can't I go running. <laughs> I wouldn't be, right. be doing that unless there was something in me wanting to go running. If I didn't care, I'd go, aye, of course running's pissed for you. But every time I hear it, I'm like, oh, I run and shite, run and shite, run and shite. That must mean that I'm like fighting it. It's the things you want to do the least or the things you need to do the most. Mm. And I really don't want to go running, man. So I know I need to go running. That's the thing as well. But see, once, like, see, when you're talking about like, the, the self discipline you install, see, doing the cold water and that, mm. I feel like we're running as well. Like, uh, there comes points. See, during the runs, it's like halfway through a run, I'll be like, ah, oh, fuck, I, I'll be like, ah, my mind will be like, ah, you're fucked. And I'll be like, ah, no, I'm not finished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, and I'm like, ah, you're collapsing, mate. You're no stopping. Mm. And then, and before I know it, it's like I did another like fucking eight k or something after that. And I'm like, ah, wait a minute, I thought I was fucked. Mm. Now, now I'm kind of like translating into my life. Like, ah, wait a minute, you felt like getting up at that point when you you didn't, and look how far you came. So that's kind of what else can I apply that to? You push through. Ah, yeah, it's just creating all these fucking like these mental. It's, it's, it's imagine doing all these mental barriers that yeah. I had all my fucking life. Literal new. And this is in the space of like a year, no, even two years. That's Mad on the running, man. I'll try it. I'll try it, mate. Next time, you're selling. mate. Next time I'm on the podcast, you'll fucking come talk to me, and I'll be, I'll be running for days. Yeah, boys, I'd love to have you as a regular guy in the podcast. It'd be right. good. It's obviously it's one of ones. If you're just leaving one, it'd be a bit. Like, oh, I mean, <laughs> shit for you to be like that. When I'm the guy, I'm to the guy like, listen, mate. I'm not going to the podcast in next week. Premeditated part of the and boy join us, man. Tell you what, mate, I get nothing but, I, and this is the thing. I'm because of the way that my memory works. This is why I wasn't that good at writing jokes. Because my memory doesn't, my memory works off like a trigger basis. So I need somebody to trigger something in me to have the memory. All right, so I need to say, like, say something, but I fuck all that's just reminded us. And that's why I jump in so quickly because when I have something, it might be something that I've not thought about since it happened 12 years ago. Mm. The day I had a memory, 
when I was doing my breathing on the bus, I had a memory of being in the swimming, cast milk swimming pool and touching the bottom and then running out of breath on the way up and coming up and going, <gasps> and I've not thought about that since it happened. So it must have been physically locked in me and on my final breath in the third round on the Wim Hof, I went, <gasps> oh wait, well, I had holding my breath out and I was like, <gasps> and when I done in, I remembered got gut, and I was like, oh, I must have been trapped in there, man. I was dying to tell somebody about it, but I couldn't, because I had, and that had been, the f and it happened when I was like eight, so that means that happens one, two, three, four, 17 years ago, and I haven't thought about it since, and it just came like that, Imagine. and that's why when I'm doing podcasts, I love doing podcasts, because my memory gets triggered, and I can go, fuck, that, oh, that, that, but when I'm sitting down to write, I was like, right, I'm Arab, I'm Arab. <laughs> You're trying to trigger yourself, can I? Aye, but I couldn't get business. nothing. Couldn't get nothing. That's why they make shit up about camels and fucking deserts and that, man. I had not, I've been to the desert and I've rode a camel. But that's nothing to do. It's <laughs> nothing to do with nothing. Um, but that's why I like doing these podcasts, man. I would reg I'd be happy to come on because my backlog of stories, I don't know. Aye, well, right now, right now we've done like two hours and that, and you've tell a lot of stories, but I think we've fucking scratched the surface. I oh, man, I And I, I can agree with that. See, we think they've been the trigger, know what I mean? Mm. So there's a lot of times in like that. It's not until you're what, fucking, you, you realise and then it's like, fuck, I'd have never have thought of that until something did what I said it after, know what I mean? No reason to talk about any of this stuff, man. Any of this stuff. Even if I was sitting myself, I would just have been doing what I was doing, man. You know, painting wee fucking, painting gnomes, mate. Loving painting gnomes. Ah, I've seen the painting gnomes, man. I, you, you doing that as a business? No, no, no. Do you know why? Because if I'd done it as a business, it would go quite well. Aye. It would go quite good. And then you'd be like, ah, um, fuck. Is it my destiny to paint gnomes forever? I don't think so, no. So that's why I can't. Uh, a, a good business. A, we'll we'll this the fucking X Factor generation and the Dragon's Den generation that'll talk. Just one good idea. One good idea can fucking change your life. No, you need to be able. You need to have that idea and then be willing to work for the rest of your life on that idea. You need to be willing to commit your fucking entire self to that single idea. I've got fucking good ideas. Ten a penny, man. If anyone wants to start restoring gnomes, good day, man. Put some tartan on them. Cuts love tartan. Love tartan. I'm not willing to commit myself to doing gnomes forever, even though I want to. And my brain's like, let's get a Facebook page, let's get a fucking business card, we'll call it Gnome uh, New. The brain's thinking ka ching, ka -ching, ka -ching. Absolutely, but I don't, I can't even focus on making money because I focus on making money. And, and this is what always happens. My business ideas always go quite well and right at, the, at that tipping point where it's just about to go, I've like shut them down and cut them off. And it looks like self-sabotage, but it's actually like self-love because I know in my heart that this isn't it. So if I let it go any further, it won't be it won't be the thing for me. So it can't be. I wonder if this. I wonder if cunts listen to this, and if they just like hear a mad cunt, or if like one in every like fifty people are like. Uh, There's a couple uh, of nuts that are gonna get cracked. Listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all the nuts. That are, uh, that's what you call your. Listeners. You're no nuts. You're uh, just about to get cracked. Uh, what's the name of this podcast? Premeditated part. Fuck, that's a great name for a podcast. Cheers, mate. I, I thought it myself. Premeditated partner. Oh, my goodness. That's pretty good, man. Nah, I like it. It's quite, it sounds quite catchy, you know what I mean? And it's one of the ones that's like, what was it before? We've, we've been trying to think of a name for this for fucking ages and we couldn't think of it at mm. And one day I was like, half it, because we were all half it. Mm -hmm. but, and it was like, oh, ah, I'm all right, but, ah, ah, fuck it, we'll go with half it. Then it was like, I was like, see that way you, you just say something and you're like, and then it was like, everybody kind of agrees with it, and I'm like, ah, I fucking hate half it. Mm. It's shite. Then I kind of make that. That was when it was the forties. Then obviously the two boys left it, and us two like, ah, right, this is I can rebrand this shit mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. This and is it, fucking it's time, boys. It's and time. I, I think I was out in that veranda. You're fucking, the face, I, you're the horns. I think I was out in that veranda smoking a joint. There's a veranda. Oh fuck, mate. There's a shutter. I'll show you after this. Hello. A let's shutter, get a mate. fucking lock in podcast. It's a wee balcony, this. and uh, it looks onto the bars. It's, oh, mate, wait till you see it, man. Oh, fucking, I will party to you during the summer, maybe they like a wee roof, rooftop gig or something like that. Oh, wait till you see it, mate, it's beautiful. You're on all sorts, man. Oh, aye, if you're fucking, uh, we're, we, we're making plans, know what I mean? Uh, that's, that's, that's one of the ones. This is it, fuck your 95, mate. Get on Universal Credit for uh, that bit. Fucking prepare yourself and then run full steam at this. You've got all the, the bits, man. And the, aye. The, the, yeah, fucking and right now, it's like one of the ones, it's like, as you're saying, see your damn, like, it's right, this, for me, this is, it's right, know what I mean, right now, because... For years I've always been chasing jobs and see with the scaffold and I've been doing it two years. My and stepdad is a scaffold. My dad's a scaffold, my brother's scaffold, my uncle's scaffold, so it was like one of the ones, oh my scaffold, mm -hmm. oh good money, I've got a job. This is the longest I've had a job in my life. Mm -hmm. First time I've actually had like a full time secure job. And that was the idea, right? I'll get my part you get your part one, part two, you know like, part one is like your semi skilled scaffold mm -hmm. or part two you're kinda of like fully qualified. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll get my part one, part two, go off show and all that shit, but I was doing it man and I was making good money and the jobs were. Mm. I was working these sound cunts. I was fucking doing what everything was brilliant and I'm like, ah, 
Why am I not happy? Why is it? I was no like, everything's place. going right. Why am I still fucking miserable? Because it wasn't your work. And it wasn't your man. And it was like, and that obviously when the lockdown happened, that's when I kind of got back into the music and shit. And I was mm. like, this is it. And it was like, this feels natural. And then it was like when I went back, and I was to get my part one. I was to go for it. Then uh, I get knocked back for it. Said too many sick days. And I was kind of like that. No, what? That this is a fucking. It was just recently I know, and I was like that. No, that's probably. I was a bit annoyed at first. I was like, no, that's probably the best thing could have happened. Because if I could have got that part one, I'd have had to stay get the part two. The part two, mate, it would have tipped. I, it would have tipped and in I the momentum. Because I would have, have st- stayed there, then I was like, ah, and I was thinking that the idea was, okay, I'll use that as a fallback. Mm. But then I was like, ah, man, but if I'm staying a part, I'm not going to get my part one, part two, then get another job. I'm going to, mm. but it's going to be scaffold. This is it. Then so when I get knocked back for that, I was like, I know what, fuck it. And then that's when I was like, ah, right, I'm going to go to college and do something. Mm. I'm actually going to enjoy the experience of college. Fucking doing something I love doing, know what I mean? And I'm like, ah, my yeah. opinion means anything to you, mate. I think I'd say go to music, man, because mm. I, I don't. Mate, I, I was fucking. I, I've, I've been accepted for acting, mate, and see the minute I, I was pure, right? And the acting was the first choice I picked. Mm-hmm. And then it was the music, it was HD music. Mm-hmm. I was like, ah, okay, right, I'll just pick as another one. Acting sent my monologues, mm-hmm. get accepted. Well done, congratulations, get that's accepted. a thing in itself. Then, uh, yeah. but I've sent my music one away, and now I'm like, ah, see, I've sat and thought about it. I was like, ah, you know what? The music one is the one I want to do. And I was talking yeah. to Mark, because. I've accepted, see, it's like on the, the online thing, you can, uh, they just send you it and you just accept it on that. Mm-hmm. So my audition for my music one, I've, I've, I only sent it the other day, because I had, a, had a, the deadline was further away, so I sent it on the other day, whereas the acting one was a few weeks ago, so I got that back sooner, but I just clicked accept on that, but now that the, the, the music one's pending, I'm like, ah, fuck, I hope that doesn't, like, they don't, I don't know, would Jink maybe be able to see that I've accepted that and be like, ah, right, they can't, they don't offer it, does it work? Doesn't it matter, oh, man. Jink would be able to see that, or would that Jink I'd still even get an offer, even if I've accepted another course? Have you accepted the acting one? Aye. Can you unaccept it? Uh, I think so, but I don't know how that works, because in case the music one comes back and I don't get that, I don't uh, you find that there's some There's somebody you can phone that sits at a desk that you can, that can change your details I, a wee bit there, mm, man. I, I done acting, man, I done a year of acting, and I wanted to be an actor. Like, I was like, this is it. Like, I just came out fucking four years of telly work. I was like, I'm going to be an actor. I was in college and I was like, <sighs> just a whole year, just. <sighs> and that's just my experience, man. There's no way to put you off. It feels like it's the no, right thing. Mate, I'm right see, right see, now, mate, it's crazy. It was at first, it was like, I was like, yes, I was, but that's why mm-hmm. I accepted so quickly. I was like, fuck, why I leave in case mm-hmm. you get to something else? And then now it's like, as if, like, the kind of. The dust is settled, and I'm like, ah, see, I actually sat about it, and I've written it like with the course offers. You interested yeah. in Stanislavski, last game, mate? You interested in learning about Uta Hagen, mate? Ah, uh, oh, you've never heard of that. Got all these techniques for you. That's the thing, but see, when I had to do the monologues, mm. I was fucking, I was, like, I've never seen a play in my fucking life. Aye. So I was, like, I had to go and find these two players, and you I feel I've done them quite. Uh, one was uh, Snuff. You ever heard of that? It's a Glaswegian play. It's about us guys. I'm at fucking race. It's nutter. I, I only picked that because somebody sent me and it was Glaswegian, mm. so I was like, ah, right, I can, I'm Easy Glaswegian, so can I hope it. an accent? No, because I was Glaswegian. I was just, I was, I was playing it, I was kind of basing it. I felt, I, I felt as if I had done it all right, no, I mean, I was mm. able to base well, it. Well, you must have managed you get fucking life. accepted. And uh, the other one was uh, One Man, Two Governors. Never heard. James Corden. Aye, uh, James Corden does it. Aye, I, I don't have no work in France, I'm a Cockney cunt. I think I actually done that in college. Aye, uh, it's quite a popular one, but I've done it quite well, so you can do accents and, uh, I done that and I was pure buzzing to do it, but I don't know. I'm thinking, like, see, thinking about just like doing the course. It's like I'd love to do it, but it's like I'm just like ah, it's even I think that between that and the music, and I'm like ah, something's it's weird, man. It was like well, it's something I just feel it, man. I'm like ah, no, man. Put it like, this way, man. You've mentioned music to me about seven times in this podcast. You've no mentioned acting until you've talked about your acting course that you're uh, going to do. That's because with the idea I thought I was like ah, right. Well, I'm kind of already good at. I'm I'm kind of. Self-taught to a degree, he's mm-hmm. quite fucking skilled with music and what we acting. I feel as if I'm skilled, but I'm, I, I'm skilled to a degree, but I've not been I've not owned the skills. Natural just, with the technical ability. Aye, so uh, and I was like, you ready for movement that. class, mate? Be rain and all that. You ready to be rain? See, that's yeah. the thing. That's what I'm thinking. Oh man, I'm like, ah, fuck. It's like it's acting, but it's not the kind of act. Right, I'd be doing this. I'm not doing this to go and play. Mm. I'm doing this because I'm writing sketches and shit and what I write shit and I'm what I act myself. So I'm what I give myself the best. Give myself the best chance and the best. I'll give myself aye. the best tools. You'll essentially be doing like mostly a theatre course. That's the thing. Aye, plays nah, and that. Definitely, isn't aye, it? Nah, man. I think it's I'm glad we had this conversation because I was, I was actually saying to Matt now up here. So I was asking the same question. I was like, I think that'll fuck me. And then, no, it's like I was. I've been thinking about it. And then I was. I was just going to wait to hear back from him. But now I'm just going to get in touch and just be like, I've accepted the acting one. However, I think I'm actually more interested in music ones that I recognise. It's fucking something that's a couple of clicks on your profile and it's, it's whatever. That's it, man. Because uh, uh, I sent them uh, I, the FOs, man. What did I've you got... send them for the audition? The the music one? 
Uh, a tune I wrote myself called The Man Out of the World End. Is man that like the world then? Uh, it was one of my first tunes I wrote. People, a lot of people say it's one of my best tunes. But I'm fucking. Or, I've only heard the title and already like. It. Oh, it's, it's gotta be a fucking. Can I get it on my MP3 player? Like, ah, I can record it and send you. Five O underscore the underscore man underscore, <laughs> the, underscore <laughs> dot MP3. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want, yeah, mate. Yeah, oh, absolutely. what man? Fuck this fucking Spotify push, I want that. I think I'm moving back to an MP3 player, man. But this is why I was locked out of the studio for so long, because I'm on a, I've switched to the burner. It's not in my How the fuck did you get a hold of me? I'll fucking tell you what I done, mate. I fucking... I, I sat- was like, why were you saying 20 minutes and minutes. finally phoned well, me? Because I was on the burner, right, but I've got my other phone for music now, until I get my MP3 player. But because it's no got internet or that, because my sim was in the burner, so I was like, oh, fuck's sake, man. So then I had to... I was sitting and I was like, right, and then after 20 minutes, I was like, nah. So I was like, I, would, I had to look about for something on the ground to stab into it, so I was getting nails and Fuck all that, sake, putting it into my phone, looking for needles, I'm like, it's the baddest man, there must <laughs> be a needle <laughs> somewhere, trying to take staples out of my phone down to you for a fucking couple of last time he was up there. Yeah, they sort it out, man, and right. fucking, uh, what am I, Darren Styles? That's where my brain went. Right, no, Darren G, never heard of Darren G? I think so. Oh, for fuck's sake, Did man. Did they sing disco lights? No, <laughs> mate, fucking, they called uh, James English a trisexual. Dead, mate, <laughs> do you know, I was all fucking, I was all heard James English on your podcast, man. For some reason, I was like, fuck James English, man. I was like, well, fuck, <laughs> you're a gimp, mate. You're, fuck, you're a gimp for gangsters, mate. You're, you've never been a hard man in your life, James, and all this. And it's very funny, man. And, I had to bleep it all out, and my pal was like, just in case, mate, just in case. And I was uh, like, just nah. in case we get bigger, I need to uh, case we, And then, because uh, uh, James English fans are like, what's your problem with James? Like, yeah, actually, does really good podcasts. And I'm like, right, we're fucking old men. <laughs> we're coming in to view me, <laughs> Willie. Fucking nah. prick. Love it, man. And cuts get pure wound up about stuff like that. that there's something about um, trolling, that's the only term I've got for it, but. That's not it, but there it's, is. Because it sounds like, probably sounds like, to a degree, it's like clout chasing, isn't it? Mm. Like clout chasing the podcast, clout chasing. No, it's in, like. In a sense, it is. Podcast is turning into like fucking. Like, you see, we get like the, like the competitive rap, you get clout chasing, you get beef rap. Mm. This is happening in the podcast world. Like, James English is in beef with. But like, this cunt Darren G, I don't know if you know much about it. You had a I don't know none of it, Darren G. This cunt Darren G, he was like a fucking ex like, Liverpool gangster. Mm. And he's just took the jail day in 10 years. Mm. He's quite intense, cunt. He's, mm. You can tell he's got a couple of screws loose. And him and James English end up parrying that. Mm. And uh, James English had the most for a cut of podcasts. And all of a sudden, he just fucking turned on James English, putting up videos, going like, calling my woman, beating that, saying he's a rat, and he's saying a lot of shit about him. <laughs> James Big English sauce. is him to put up videos going like, listen, well, mate. I said, I'm not a rat beater, and I'm not a woman. No, sorry, I'm not a woman beater, and I'm not a rat. That damn was like, he's pounds. They were kind of parrying mm. on it, then. And, uh, he's just, he's, like, you can tell he's flipped, man. He's just... He's paranoid, man, and then he's like, ah, James English something to put up videos, kind of, so it's like, can I beef then, this guy Marvin Herbert, he's an owlet, Liverpool gangster. Marvin was, Herbert? Aye. That's, he's obviously oh, been he's called... got one eye, he's been shot in the eye, mate, he's oh, a mad bastard. He's, he's obviously been called Herbert the pervert, and that's just fucking See, ruined. See, you honest, man, I get school. called Herbert the pervert, and it's not a nice day. <laughs> I get called it in primary school, I remember this, but I, I, I didn't get called it off every kind of one boy always called me when Herbert the pervert, and it annoyed me, and this is back before I had parlor, so I was kind of like, that, and it kept annoying me, and I says to like, I says to like, like an elder person, but I just went like, I was just talking, I was like, this fucking boy keeps calling me Herbert the pervert, and they were like, ah, just say to him, yeah, it takes one to know one then, they'll see because of the wee guy. So I was like, ah, pure. It was like at the weekend. So oh. I, was like, I was choking to get to school. And I was like, ah, that's writing it down and all that. It. Like your lines. He's getting it. And I was pure looking at the playground for me to run by. And he was running by. And I seen him. And I was waiting. And he ran up. He's like, Herbert the pervert. And I was like, ah, takes one to know one. And he just looked at us for two seconds. went, Herbert the pervert. And that's the Fucking brick. I was pure. I never felt so deflated in my life. I feel like It didn't even register that I fucking said it, man. <laughs> uh, that was a primary school nickname then I went to secondary school and I started getting called brains because I, I was dead white and I, I resembled a zombie <laughs> then uh, <laughs> then uh, I, I bammed up a mad lassie and told her about every scheme in Glasgow and she called me 50 schemes and then oh, that stuck and it's just been 50 yeah, schemes since friend. and now it's been uh, it's every variation when I was hitting oh. the gym I was massive I get called 50% water so I was <laughs> Then I patched the gym for a big belly, I get called 50 stone. Oh. And I, it's just been, now it's 5-0. Yeah. Now I can fucking make some money off it, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. You bastards, cheers. I've been trying to make tea stick for years, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not happened. TV? TV, Oh, man. fuck, uh, I say oh, tea then, what's your second boy? Ah, TV, uh, Do anyway. you just ever remember a period during texting where people would put TB at the end of text? Text back? Text back. Uh, yeah, I, I thought, thought it was just, I thought it was, I thought people were just doing my initials. So I started <laughs> doing their initials back. 
So if I was taking somebody called like Sean Newman, I'd get it. I was very close to the name of my first girlfriend there. I don't know why my brains went to there. Well, Sean Newman? I no, that's obviously a different first name, but we're not going to Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I get it now. Like, I was to, like, Sean Newman, my first girlfriend. No, no, I know that. I've, 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 I've said I was taking somebody called, why am I trying to stick with these same initials? <laughs> Claire Mitchelson, right? Say I was trying to sit my, my, my brain's like that. Say your ex's name on this podcast. Say it. Say it to the camera. I won't. Say I was texting somebody called Claire Mitchell and she'd be like, oh, how are you doing, TB? I'd be like, not bad. CM. And she'd be like, CM? Question mark. And I'd be like, oh, your initials. She'd be like, oh. Took me like, we are talking like six months of this before I realised it meant text back. Because nobody told me. Nobody goes, oh, by the way, people are saying TB, it means text back now. People just started adding it. Ah, uh, there's never, there's no like uh, a fucking, there's no, you should do like kind of like translation classes for texting, man. See mm. something new. Back then, the base was like LOL, LMFAO, that shit. You, cannot, mm. you could decipher that, like, right, what would that person be trying to say? Mm. Now you've got all sorts of mad shit, man. You're fucking, I, I don't even know how to fucking say it. I'm over them like that, trying to sit in my tea break at work, like, what the fuck is it? <laughs> and it's like a fucking, you can tell it's like a fucking 12 year old meme or something, and I'm sitting like a fucking. CIA fucking try to fucking decipher it or some man this fucking code breaker left, man left Twitter man because every day would just these words that were like like this like the only example of what news people like oh that hits differently and I'm like they two words have never been put together and and I, and then I'll say what, what do you mean it hits differently and they're like everybody says that and I'm like nobody's ever said it but because it's been about for three weeks people are like oh catch up. Like, why? What is this language? Ah. It's weird social media see the shit that catches you on. It's the shit that shouldn't they catch on? Mm. And see that you're like, ah, see, I, I put it down whenever I think of shit, I'm like, ah, yes, this is it. This, this, is, is, be, this is the next bit of part. And you say it and cunts don't, cunts fucking, it's like as if you fucking don't even spoke. You're mm. like, and you try to find a wee moment, say it again, and you type it. Then some cunt says, fucking, catch me outside, what about that? How about that? What? Catch me outside, what about that? No, I mean, I made a pure cunt to that. I'll get, I'll get hung for this shit, man. mate. Big 50, 50, hung, year, drawn and 50 slaughtered. years old, mate. Oh, catch up. fuck, I know, man. Aye, I'm done. Where age are you? 28. That's alright, man. I'm 25. I've looked 30 if I was 16, yeah. apparently. I've looked 13 if I was 16. I feel like I'm in that film fucking. What's that? Tom Hanks. Day, fuck's sake. Really? No, I couldn't fault. You're my wee <laughs> bra, and you tell me I was your dad, and I couldn't never, never disbelieve you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't blink an eye. When I was 16, I used to go into the baby shop, and they'd be like, ah, You look about 30. I'd be like, like He's boozing, like, No, you need ID. Like, What? <laughs> so uh, so uh, you can insult me, but you can't give me baby. I got ID'd for clear lacquer and BM. By what? a woman who has regularly served me booze for a couple of years. Couldn't just stay out of fucking spite, I think. Sorry, I can't do it. I'm like, I know you can. Like, do you think that because you've told me that, I'm going to believe that you can just give me this? I know that you can just click the button that goes, looks over 25, and I'm like, just click the button. But I'm sorry, I can't. And I'm like, I know you can. You know you can, and I know you can. But they honestly believe, they're like, sorry, I just just can't. I, I did for paracetamol, mate. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. Done. And ever since the mask came in, a lot harder as well, because the beard just to be a bit of a. People uh, wouldn't question it, but now with the mask, they just see a little boy and little eyes. I've still got that childhood sparkle. <laughs> you always have to wear the mask just to buy baby underage or some shit like uh, that, man. It's like, oh, he's always wearing the mask. Can I get a bottle of Jack Daniels? They don't, uh, they don't ask you to take the mask mm. off either, because that's breaching fucking COVID rules, so they'll just knock you fucking back. Uh, met a woman in Tesco who was a lip reader. So she was like, I was like, excuse me, where's the sausages? And she was like, I had a badge that said, I'm a lip reader, and I had to go. Excuse me, where's the sausages? Like, really? Hi. <laughs> Where was she locked up now? Aye. She, <laughs> she must have just a, she must have just a Aye, she, person. Excuse me, where's the sauce? She's pure picked a rank on that <laughs> shop, don't you, man? As if an agent. Right, everybody in that shop, yeah. man. Well, like, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Aye. Nah, man, that's good. That's good. I think, I think that's... Aye, man. <laughs> <laughs> Been beautiful, so anyway, I was gonna ask, but you got I, questions, mate. I, I did take a quick eye, but fire away, mate. Let's fucking no, quit. No, the let's... questions oh, are pretty I much. No, but usually, I've, I've mate, we've covered pretty much everything I was gonna ask mm. and more, but it's, it's juicy, honestly. God, really this is a it, fucking it, juicy it. kebab of a podcast. I guess it's been my favorite podcast, of mate. Mine, too, mate. Honestly, I said that about all the other ones I've been on, but that's because they were up until this point. But this is now, honestly, God, no, every podcast I've done a few issues of one. This is this is set a set a formula or something like that. I know mm. set a formula, set a precedent. Set, set a precedent. No, it's like fin- it's only upwards for here. Yeah, man. Can I feel as if now and this is when it's fucking, this is when it really starts, you know what I mean? I always wanted to do the two, three year podcast, man, because I used to listen to Pete Holmes for the podcast called You Made It Weird, and it was always about the two. There's a bit of a lag between an hour and a half and two. It's uh. a bit like, 
do you go swimming in that? You know, like, fucking... And then at that two-year mark, it's like, I need to talk about something deep and interesting because otherwise this is awful. It, it's like the minute the, sh- the clock strikes midnight and you're texting mm. somebody, then all of a sudden it's like, at eleven fifty nine. I'm just gonna have a pizza. Like two minutes past twelve, you ever killed something? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. It's like that kind of shit. Know what I mean? But, but it's been wonderful. Many oh, sliders are on amazing. the table. But. Usually, I ask people fucking. So where's you? Where you taking it for you? Obviously, you're only taking one day at a time, right? I'm now, literally so doing it one day at a time, man. And I'm keeping surrendering my entire life strategy, my plans, my worries. My desires, my hopes, my dreams, I am surrendering it all and a, the Indians call it Brahman, which essentially is just like a big fuck off void, but it's also completely full. So it's completely empty and it's completely full and you can put whatever you want in it. And that's like, that's God. That's essentially God. Is like, if you, if you want to put your fear in it, you can put your fear in it. If you want to put your lust in it, you can put your lust in it. If you want to put your happiness in it, you can put your happiness in it. It's empty, but it's also full. It doesn't make a difference. Everything that comes through my life, gain it up, man. I'm praying like fuck. Never thought it'd be a prayer. No, I always, I read the Da Vinci Code and uh, fucking about Richard Dawkins when I was 12. And I was like, God doesn't even exist, man. Like, what are you praying to a fucking false entity? <laughs> All that shit. I'm on my knees every night, man. Fuck it. Nah. Nah, I pray to God, <laughs> man. I pray to God, <laughs> man. I get a wee shrine in my room with Hanuman, the monkey god. I get a photo of Ramdas and uh, Maharaji and a photo of my, my wee grand, the man who's on there. I like, we can do every night and I fucking get in front. We, he'd done... Praying like fuck, I've never yeah, felt man. better for it, man. Amazing, I've never mate. felt better for it. Really happy for you, mate, honest to God, man. See, you the last time I met, you know what I mean? It's all, you're still got your charisma, you know what I mean? You still got your personality, you know, get in like you know what I mean? But the fact that you're, you're feeling free, you know what I mean? And that you've been able to, you know what I mean, move on positively, you managed to get your free, addictions man. in that, man. It's fucking amazing. It's good stuff, but that's why I can drink in that now, because I'm like, well, if I fucking, if I carry wine, I'm getting steaming. Uh, aye. It's caught a birds, man. They could do quite beautifully, man. Very nice, man. Get addicted to them for a couple of months, and then I'll join AA, man. That's the system. <laughs> Onwards and upwards, isn't it, my man? Uh, it's 50 minutes. Hey, it's been an absolute pleasure. Incredible, man. Team Meditated nah, Battle Troops. Team Meditated Battle Troops. Amazing. Episode Catch you later. Episode 11. 11. 1-1. 1-1. 1-1. Join that 12 steps. I'm a serial chugger. Yeah, mate. Fucking. <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. If you're watching...